Alrighty, hey hey, Jelly Toast here, back with the final episode of Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Let's do this, let's finish it. Resolve of Ryunosuke Naruhodo Trial Part 3, final. Let's go. I, I hope this is the final. I'm just saying this is final. Oh no, what if it's like too super long? Uh, no matter what, I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna finish it. So, witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. Yuji Mikotoba, lecturer in forensic medicine at the Imperial Yumei University in Tokyo, Japan. Mariah's here. Oh, you can see my mic in the camera. Let's get that out. <laughs> and Professor Mikotoba, the young lady beside you is... Oh, then I think I have to raise my mic a little... Okay. Ah, this is Dr. Mariah Gori. Scotland Yard's practicing coroner. The doctor of Dr. Scythe, I understand. Yes, Dr. Scythe. I'm afraid I can't tell you why she's here. She's just appeared. I summoned this strange Japanese man as a witness to the autopsy. But you don't summon Mama. That makes no sense. She was there too. That's about the size of it. I've had her eyes boring into the side of my cheek constantly, whilst I was in the antechamber too. Poor man, the idea of it's making me shudder. The revelations about Dr. Scythe that came to light some days ago defiled the reputation of the entire judiciary. She was therefore deemed unfit to appear as a witness in today's proceedings. Why would that make her unfit? Like, she was coerced, like, blackmailed into doing stuff? So it's not her fault? But whatever. The Minister of Justice's decision on that is final. You mean you don't want her to appear in court? Because she's going to spill the beans! Well, we wouldn't want any more perjury to be committed, would we? The Ministry of Justice? Some questionable strings are being pulled, I think. I remember you, Dr. Mikotoba. But I certainly never expected to be meeting you under these circumstances. Yes, it's been a long while, Lord Strongheart. The prosecution understands that you were a visiting student of forensic science in London until 10 years ago. That's right. I studied under Dr. Wilson at St. Sinners. So you were present at the autopsy of my brother, Lord Clint Van Zeeks. I was, yes. I assisted Dr. Wilson with the entire procedure. Mama is far more skilled than any Japanese man. Uh, you don't even know what he's like, dude. Well, Dr. Wilson asked me to be his primary assistant on that occasion. And this autopsy report was actually penned by you, I believe. Yes, I noted all of the doctor's findings and when we were done, he read through the document and signed it. Poor Mama. As a secondary assistant, she wouldn't have had such a good view of all the innards. So, Professor, do you remember Inspector Gregson? Yes, of course. If it wasn't for his insistence, Lord Van Zeek's autopsy would never have happened. But he was absolutely convinced that it would reveal decisive evidence against Genshin, you see. So Lord Strongheart had to entreat the nobility to allow it to take place. Do correct me if I'm wrong, my lord. It was as a result of that autopsy that a mass murderer was apprehended and justice was done. But Gregson admitted it before he was killed. He admitted that the results of the autopsy were fabricated. You were there at the time, so you must testify. You have an obligation to tell the truth about what really went on. Absolutely. That's precisely why I'm here. I think my mic is a little too high. And that's why I'm here too. Very well then. You will give your formal testimony now, witness. But before you begin, a word of warning. No. You will state truthfully and accurately what you saw and what you heard at the time. I wouldn't dream of doing otherwise, my lord. The moment your testimony verges on supposition, I will expel you from my courtroom. What's he trying to do? Remember that. Maybe he's trying to be like, don't do anything um, that'll... Wait, does... Is Mikotoba even aware of everything that's going on? 
From my own observations, I couldn't say there was any indication of the autopsy results having been fabricated. Death resulted from a wound made by a western-style sword transfixing the heart. That I found a little strange. Western-style sword. There were no other signs of an internal injury. Nothing questionable at all. It was just that beautiful but dangerous piece of evidence removed from the man's stomach. Presumed to have been swallowed by the victim as a way of posthumously identifying his assailants. Rattata escaped. No one caught it. Oh no, shame. <laughs> no indication? Nothing to suggest fabrication? Professor Mikotoba, are you certain about that? Well, nothing that I could positively identify as such, much less swear to in testimony. Ah. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna punch his face. Well, that clears things up nicely. The only fabrication here, Asogi, has come from you. What? You claim the inspector confessed just before his death, but that, that is the fabrication. No, he freely acknowledged it, I swear he did. Freely, with the tip of a sword at his throat, the man was clearly at his wit's end. The court will give no credence to this confession that was uttered in obvious desperation. Quite simply, there was nothing questionable about the investigation of Lord Clint Van Zeek's death. And with this testimony we have, without question, uncovered the whole truth of the matter. If I may, my lord. There was most certainly something questionable about it, and the whole truth does rather elude us, I feel. I beg your pardon. Well, you're obviously aware of the facts of the case. All four of the professor's previous victims died when an enormous beast was set upon them that ripped out their throats. Oh, such horrifying crimes. But curiously, the killer's last victim, Lord Clint Van Zeek, suffered a different fate. Yes, you're right. He was stabbed to the heart with a sword. That's enough. I believe I warned you about this, witness. I promised to curtail your testimony as soon as it entered the realms of supposition or speculation. Hmm. Very well, my lord. In that case, the defense will pursue a conclusion to this during the cross-examination. What? I have the right to cross-examine every witness after testimony. And I fully intend to exercise that right. Yunosuke. I'm afraid that even the presiding judge has no authority to contravene the letter of the law. As I'm sure every member of the judiciary present in the gallery would agree. Hmm. Very well, you may begin, counsel. However, the moment your argument strays from the established facts, I will not hesitate to bring the cross-examination to an end. Proceed with caution. So he knows we're getting closer to the truth, and he's getting scared, you freaking loser. Yes, my lord. From my own observations, couldn't say there was any indication of results being fabricated. What the you couldn't say? No, sadly not. But then you couldn't say there wasn't any indication either, could you? No, true, I couldn't. I was at Dr. Wilson's side as he performed the procedure, recording what he did. But at times, of course, he instructed me to fetch implements and su such like. Whilst I was away from the operating table, obviously I could have missed something. And at those times, what was the secondary assistant doing? following this Japanese man's orders to adjust the lighting or pass some implements. But that doesn't mean Mama wasn't a vital part of the team. Qu quite, yes. So would you kindly refrain from staring at my cheek like that? Professor Mikotoba, think. Was there nothing at all that seemed out of place to you? Well, yes, there was, as a matter of fact. I woke up this morning and it felt like a bug was crawling on my arm. Why? I have no idea if it was real or just a dream feeling. Hi. First of all, Golden, thanks for joining. Second of all, that is a terrible way to wake up. Ew. Um, I think it was just a dream feeling. Because if you didn't see anything after the fact, then your skin was just like, woo, tingly. That's what I'm going to say, so that there was no bug in your room. <laughs> That's resulted from a wound made by a Western-style sword. Because Genshin has a Japanese blade. And all the previous four killings attributed to the professor. 
The victims were killed by an enormous dog, I believe. Their throats were, well, mauled? Correct. And yet Lord Van Zeeks was stabbed. Ah, do you mean to say... You think Lord Clint Van Zeeks may not have, in fact, been one of the professor's victims? There's no basis on which to doubt the findings of the investigations carried out at the time. But... Genshin Asogi confessed to all of his crimes upon his arrest. He admitted to having taken the lives of all five members of the aristocracy. Ah. Uh, yet the beast that was used to carry out the killings was never identified. No evidence was found to suggest that Genshin had ever kept a dog. A true hound of hell. Wait a minute. Didn't we see... In one of the previous cases, we found a blo bloody dog collar. But I think there was like initials on it or a name on it. And it wasn't... It wasn't um, Genshin's name. So I don't remember what the name or what was written on it though, but whoever was written on it, that must have been the dog's owner. I woke up and instantly started swiping like crazy at it. One time I woke up and it felt like a spider was on my foot. That was thankfully just a dream feeling. Yeah, I think you're just getting all dream feelings. Hey, what's smooth? How you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. It's almost Friday. I'm going to Disneyland again on Monday. Woo! There are no other signs of internal injury. Nothing questionable. But, um, you weren't actually present at the autopsy yourself, were you, Dr. Gori? Does that matter? Well, I just wonder how useful your testimony can be in that case, really. I mean, it would be different if your mother, Dr. Scythe, were in the stand, but... I've read all the paperwork about the case, and my mom's told me this story countless times. The statement I just made is exactly what's written in the autopsy report. I did confirm that myself at the time, it's true. Besides the stab wound, there were no other signs of internal trauma. I see. Mama told me all about it. Oh? She said there was nothing of note internally. But they did find an amazing piece of evidence. Something unbelievable. Unbelievable? What do you mean? Come on, Dr. Gori. What was it? This beautiful, dangerous piece of evidence. Thank <laughs> god, it's almost Friday. Are you gonna bring us back anything from Disney? I will bring you back the residual people grime. <laughs> I'll bring back all the all the human skin cells from holding onto handlebars at the Tower of Terror. I gotta stop calling it Tower of Terror. It's Guardians of the Galaxy now. What exactly was it though? What does beautiful but dangerous mean? Well, it was sparkly and round with a hole as if it might slip over a finger perhaps. It was a ring, belonging to Genshin Nasogi. My father's ring was inside the victim's stomach? At the time, Genshin wore a large ring on the digitus quartus of his left hand, the fourth or a ring finger. I'd understood it was some sort of keepsake. When my father left Japan for London 16 years ago, I was 8 years old. But I remember that ring. You do? My father's possessions were sent to our family home in Japan after his death, but the ring wasn't among them. Obviously not. It was a key piece of evidence. It remains under lock and key in the stores at Scotland Yard to this day. After the autopsy, Genshi was summoned by the police to check for the presence of his ring. It wasn't on his hand, of course. More, moreover, there were deep abrasion on his finger where it had been pulled off. They arrested the man then and there, right before my eyes. How could they? I brought the ring along with me today. What? Here it is. A bit dusty from years in the stores. Sorry, I was just looking at it because I'm like, that is so freaking sharp. If it was like a small, just plain band, yeah, I can see how that wouldn't leave any internal, you know, marks or whatever. That thing is freaking jagged. If you had, oh gosh, just imagining swallowing it. There's half, there have to be scratches all along his throat, his esophagus. His intestines. What the heck? 
It'll always be Tower of Terror to me. I don't remember ever going on that ride, but my family tells me I did and I was scared. I wish I had your good luck charm and you can have my do... Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, Smooth. I can't understand that. I think autocorrect really messed up your words. But yeah, um, Tower of Terror, I don't... I remember going on Tower of Terror. I don't remember exactly how the ride operated then, but with Guardians of the Galaxy now, like, you go up and, like, they open a screen and you see, like, monitors of, like, the Guardians doing their shenanigans and you go down, up, down, up, and then finally you go all the way up and then you go all the way down. And it's exciting. No Roger Miller fans, okay. I don't know who he is, I'm sorry. Good gracious, yes, that's it. I haven't seen that in 10 long years. And that was found inside the victim's stomach? I... yes, I'm afraid so. You've hesitated there, Professor Mikotoba. Should we read something into that? Ah, huh, well, it's just that thinking back now. I didn't actually witness the moment it was extracted from the victim's body. Oh my! Really? At that precise moment, Dr. Wilson has asked me to fetch him a new scalpel, you see. Dr. Gory. The removal of historic evidence from the stores requires my consent, does it not? You locked up her mom. She's not going to listen to you. However it came to be here, the court cannot deny that this is crucial evidence for today's proceedings. Very well, you may submit it. The claws glass grasping the gem look sharp enough to cause a very nasty scratch. It's not the sort of ring normally seen in Japan. They almost look like claws protecting that jewel. You must examine it very carefully, Mr. Narohodo. Very carefully indeed. It's kind of freaking obvious. Um... Wait, okay, so they want us to examine the ring, huh? Have you ever watched the Robin Hood animated Disney with the fox? Yes, of course! Who hasn't? Man, Maid Marian was so pretty. Robin Hood was so good looking, man. These fat claws are doing a good job of protecting the equally fat gemstone in the middle of this ring. Yes, if you were clumsy, you could give yourself a rather nasty cut on them, I should think. Ow, now my finger's bleeding. The claws really are sharp. Oh my, that was very quick clumsiness, Mr. Naruhodo, even for you. Uh, who would make such a dangerous ring? You couldn't swallow it without doing yourself some fairly serious damage, surely. A sticky mochi bun of, of about that size would go down much better, with some red bead paste in the middle. Someone as clumsy as me would probably manage to choke on it somehow. No other markings? Okay, just the claws. Presumed to have been swallowed by the victim as way of posthumously a uh, No, we gotta... Mm. Nothing questionable at all? This could cut a man! This thing at the very beginning and in the middle, that's Roger Miller. Oh, he's the rooster? The court has heard that the ring was extracted from the victim's stomach. But you didn't actually see it being removed, did you, Professor Mikotoba? That's right. As I said in my testimony before, at that moment, I was fetching a replacement scalpel that Dr. Wilson had requested. In other words, you can neither confirm nor deny whether this ring in fact really came from the victim's stomach or not. What are you suggesting, counsel? That the ring was never in the victim's stomach to begin with. It's entirely feasible that Dr. Wilson fabricated that detail about the autopsy. What are you saying? That Dr. Wilson... That Dr. Wilson was in possession of the ring in advance after it was somehow stolen from Mr. Asogi. And he produced it during the procedure, pretending to have found it there and then in the victim's stomach. <laughs> Supposition at best. What possible evidence do you have to support such a rash claim? This evidence right here. That's the autopsy report. It's explicit in that report, counsel. Other than the ring, nothing unusual was noted internally, so I'm not sure how you intend to prove your points. You've already done it for me, my lord. The lack of internal injury says it all. What? To swallow a ring of this size would require considerable effort and determination. And in addition to its size, there are sharp claws around the gemstone to contend with. 
My brother was a determined man, and on the brink of death even more so, I'm sure. He would have stopped at nothing to ensure that evil killer was brought to justice. But if he really had swallowed that enormous ring, it's inconceivable that no traces of its passage down his throat would have remained as internal trauma. No. And there you've arrived at the sticking point. That's precisely why I had my doubts about the findings myself ten years ago. Then why didn't you say something at the time? I did. I still remember the conversation I had with Dr. Wilson in the laboratory that day. Look at this! Now this is a very curious thing to find out in a man's stomach, wouldn't you say? But isn't that rather peculiar, Dr. Wilson? What's that now, Mika Chuba? Well, if you swallow the ring of that size with those sharp clutter claws that it has, surely you'd expect to see damage to the throat and esophagus, torn mucus membranes at the very least. Dr. Mika Chuba, may I remind you? But I have vastly more experience than you. I'm terribly sorry. I can think of plenty of ways to explain why no injuries would be seen. No, let's say this. The victim would appear to have ingested the item as evidence to identify his assailant. Go ahead, write it down. You freaking... Wow, Wilson, I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> <sighs> Hop up escaped. No one caught it. Why? What's the point of this Pokemon chat thing? I don't understand. <laughs> He's made a lot of songs. This time autocorrect was not the blame. That was the song Wackadoo Wackadoo. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Now I learned something. I was right. Dr. Wilson deliberately fabricated the results of the autopsy to implicate my father. I'm disappointed, counsel. That argument is nothing more than speculation. What? Dr. Wilson was Britain's leading authority on forensic science and autopsy work. There's no scientific basis on which to doubt the man's expert opinion. Pardon the interruption, my lord, but... Damage to the mucous membranes of the throat is easily identified, even in living objects. Using a device called an endoscope recently demonstrated in practical use in France. I want one. The government can pay. I don't think so. And Dr. Gory. Rest assured that your removal of evidence from the stores without permission will not go unpunished. Yo, she could just go up there to stab you. <laughs> we open up the dead to find the truth. I beg your pardon. But Mama, she chose to stitch her corpses up with all her secrets inside. That's wrong. Dr. Gory, it's looking as though she's chosen to walk a different path to her Mama. Trash. Yes, the ring. What about the ring? I've just remembered something. An earlier incident. What incident? The one I recounted to you before, about the memory I have. Of Genshin Asogi saving my life. What? My father saved your life? It was ten years ago on a foggy night. Kishin and I were walking down some back streets at a late hour. All of a sudden... You make a peep, you're coming with us! All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their faces obscured by scars. Bang! The next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Kishin lay on the cobble street. God was seeping from his left hand, he shielded me. It was on the ring finger of his left hand that he used to wear that ring. Ah, are you saying? I've always believed those thugs were after me. But now I'm starting to question if perhaps I wasn't the intended target after all. Wait, but... Genshin was arrested two days after that attack. And in that short interval, the decisive evidence needed to indict him was miraculously found. You mean... the ring was stolen from him? You think that's what those thugs were af after that night? Yeah, because it would have been forcibly yeah. wrenched off his hand. You pathetic coward. You expect me to believe that you weren't involved? What do you mean by that? 
It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who took it. You stole my father's ring. You set the whole thing up so- Kazuma. Open your eyes. Y Yunosuke? You must know deep down. The truth can be completely obscured even when your judgment is only slightly clouded. But at the moment, you seem to be floundering through a dense fog. Is that why you're so insistent I should be present in this trial? To see you like this? <laughs> well, this is an amusing spectacle. What a grandiose expression of your face, as if you were Lady Justice herself. It seems you've thoroughly convinced yourself of this alleg alleged fabrication of the autopsy results. So much so that you're apparently blind to the blatant contradiction that would be born out of it. What? Though it's extremely hard to believe, let us imagine that there was some sort- some misconduct during the autopsy. If that were the case, why would Asuki not have disputed the findings in the trial? Oh. In the closed court hearing ten years ago, the defendant never once denied the claims against him. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? Yes, that is indeed correct. Upon hearing the verdict of guilty, he merely closed his eyes, quietly accepting the judgment. The actions of a man who has escaped re accepted responsibility for his deeds and is resigned to his fate. But then... Oh my, that is very strange. If Mr. Asagi did nothing to oppose the charges against him, then... That would surely mean there was no fabricated evidence. Then why did they try to get him out of his grave when he died? Like, something's up! <laughs> just kill him, no one would know. <laughs> Everyone in the courtroom would know! Man, I wish we could just off him, but we can't. Also, hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Was Kasuma's dad an assassin? No. He was uh, training to be a detective. An obvious conclusion at which you should have arrived many minutes ago, Prosecutor Asogi. Your twisted loyalty and clouded judgment are hampering your ability for logical thought. Ah. Genshin Asugi's silence at his hearing can mean only one thing. There was no fabrication of evidence during the autopsy of his final victim ten years ago. Ah. No, it's a lie. But if that autopsy was all ab above board, there'll be nothing to stop Lord Strongheart bringing this trial to an immediate conclusion. Thank you, Yudosuke. If it wasn't for your frank words just now. This trial may very well have ended prematurely. Kazuma? What is this latest absurdity, Council? My lord. Your reasoning is perfectly sound, but for one giant hole. I beg your pardon. You claim my father's silence was due to the fact that there was no fabricated evidence. But there's another possible explanation. You've overlooked the possibility that he had a reason for maintaining that silence. Silence that would lead him to being convicted and sent to his death. If the autopsy results were an invention, there's no conceivable reason why the man wouldn't have protested. Oh, those results were an invention, all right. There's no question of that. Or are you forgetting that two people with a connection to that autopsy have been assassinated? If I force the grievances I feel from my mind, I start to see you in a very different light. I think perhaps it's you who's been living in delusion these ten years. M me Kazuma-sama has created one last chance for us here, Mr. Nadohodo. If we can only show that there was a reason for his father's silence in his trial. A reason why the man would have said nothing even though he was innocent. Could it have been part of some negotiation, perhaps? Enough rhetoric. The court must be shown evidence. What proof do you have that could possibly explain Asuki's silence in court? Virtual hugs, thanks for the hugs, Regal! Yeah, you fixed the Pokemon thing. Yeah, now catch all the Hoppips and Rattatas. Dismissal notice. Relieved of his post, having violated Clause 132. Aiding and abetting the escape of this prison conflict just prior to execution. Indications are that jailbreak plot was conceived prior to the conflict's incarceration! Ah! 
didn't think this would come back into play now. It's true that Genshin Asuki's silence during his trial resulted in his conviction. But that didn't actually lead to his execution. On the contrary. It led to his escape. An escape that was only possible because he'd been sentenced to death. Although I find it hard to believe my father would have negotiated in that way, the defense is correct. A fake execution, falsification of a death certificate, and a jailbreak inside a coffin. Clearly such an elaborate plan couldn't have been carried out by my father alone. He must have had the help of a collaborator from the judiciary. I have here the dismissal notice of the chief warder who was working in the prison at the time. The notes read, There are indications that the jailbreak was in planning prior to the inmate's incarceration. In other words... There were suggestions of some sort of negotiation between Mr. Asugi and the British government. In exchange for his silence in court, he was given an assurance that he would be broken out of prison. Yes, with that sort of clandestine agreement in place, I can imagine he would have kept very quiet. I would go further than that, in fact. I would say that the elaborate jailbreak of Mr. Asugi can be explained in no other way. Order! First fabricated evidence and now a jailbreak conspiracy. Of course, because it's all intimately linked. The prosecution wishes to summon new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses. People who can testify about the jailbreak that took place ten years ago. Ah. Governor Caden and the poor chief warder out of the prison. Of the prison. I won't allow this trial to turn into a farce. To summon the governor of the prison after all these years. Oh, it wouldn't be any trouble, my lord. What? Mother? My dear friend may appear a little ra rattle-pated at times, but I can assure you he is extremely thorough. He wired both Barkley and the local prison earlier. Asking Governor Caden and Mr. Vigil to attend the Old Bailey as a matter of extreme urgency. Mr. Sholmes did that? Are you telling me that? Both men are, unless I'm much mistaken. I'm waiting just outside the courtroom at this very moment. I almost have all crafters maxed in 14. <gasps> Dude, that's awesome! I'm like working on all the crafters except fishing and cooking. And alchemy. Those are the only three I'm not touching. Although, I think I should do cooking because at least last year or two years ago, number one way to make tons of money in 14 was to make chocolate chip cookies. So maybe I should get into cooking. Ugh. My lord, you must permit this trial to proceed as you declared at its outset. You promised that we would stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Very well. Bring in the witnesses. Make no mistake. I too would like nothing more than to lay this business to rest once and for all. Yeah, because then no one would come after you anymore, you dumb butt. Why are you hating on alchemy? They were coffee biscuits? Oh, it was coffee biscuits? I thought it was chocolate chip cookies. I, I don't know. I don't really use, like, items and potions and stuff when I'm playing, and I should use them. So that's why I'm just like, eh, I could skip on alchemy for now. Would the new witnesses state their names and occupations for the court, please? Hi, Barricade Inn, Governor of Barclay Prison. Everyone calls me gossip. I saw, um, your other persona, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sneasel appeared! Oh, I do beg your pardon. Of course. I became a bard. Bards are the best. My name is Daily Vigil. I used to be the chief warder at Barclay Prison. The reason you've been summoned here to court today is to testify about the jailbreak of the so-called professor ten years ago. Losh! The professor! We've all been, been through all that for a decade ago! And the conclusion was that there was no, there was no anything untoward that happens. A convict escaped from your prison, Governor. Hardly what you'd call nothing untoward. Ah, oh, well. The convict's death certificate was somehow falsified after he was allegedly executed. And he escaped the prison inside his own coffin. A plan of that complexity could never have been carried out without the help of somebody of influence inside the prison. Governor Caden, don't imagine that the passage of time will afford you any protection. <gasps> yeah, so my my um my theory was correct. Like barricade in just used daily vigil. Did I ever say this on stream? But yeah, barricade in used daily vigil as a uh, scapegoat 
He'd be like, oh, he did the thing. Ah. If it turns out that you were involved in the plot to break Mr. Asagi out of your prison, then of course, the consequences will be very serious. In all likelihood, a capital punishment. Get! Hold on there, laddie. All I did was... Witness. Governor Kaden. Hmm? Oh, I sir. We have a critical role to play in the public safety of our country. A great responsibility to shoulder. The significance of your testimony in court cannot be understated. Therefore, think carefully before you speak. He's speaking in code to be like, yo, watch what you say to not get us guilty. And Prosecutor Asogi, if you threaten the witness again, you'll be held in contempt of court. <laughs> my apologies, my lord. There's no disputing the fact that an intricate jailbreak plot was enacted 10 years ago. Clearly, you were both involved in some way. So you will testify before the court now and explain exactly what took place. Very well. Let the witnesses give their formal testimony. Tell the court everything you know of the plot to break Asogi out of Barkley 10 years ago. Hazel escaped! <gasps> it was the day that Japanese jock was found guilty. The directive came from the prosecutor's office. I signed the convict to the chief order vigil there and put the plan into action behind the scenes. I was responsible for Asagi right up until the night of his execution, but I knew nothing of any plots. I didn't care if there were some negotiations between the convict and the prosecutor's office. All I did was carry out my duty. Your Majesty's Great British Empire! Eh? A directive from the prosecutor's office? Are you saying that was the jailbreak plot? Oi, that's right. Who sent it? Who authorized that plan? I did a can that. Say you don't know? Listen, there wasn't a- there wasn't a thing about that professor case that was a unusual- oh, it's a, his accent, man. I didn't ask any questions. I just did what I was told to do. More than that, I couldn't tell you. I see. But if the jailbreak plan originated from the prosecutor's office, and, um, well, 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 and Strongheart was the prosecutor before Barrack was like, yo, let me take over to avenge my brother. It was Strongheart! And one thing is very clear. As suspected, there were clandestine dealings going on between Mr. Asugi and that office. The jailbreak was promised in exchange for Mr. Asugi admitting to the crimes he didn't commit. Kill him. For real! That, counsel, is nothing more than speculation on your part. So, let me ask the defense. Oh, yes, my lord? I fail to see how these witnesses have any more pertinent information here. Do you intend to assert your rights to a cross-examination? Absolutely, I have no intention of squandering a single opportunity, my lord. It seems all you Japanese are fiercely tenacious. So are you! Look at you trying to, like, derail this trial. Very well, proceed, counsel. Shut your mouth. Try Sean Connery. Oh, Sean Connery would be good for his accent. Okay, press everything. Directive came from the prosecutor's office. And you say you don't know who actually issued the directive. Aye, that's right. All I can be sure of is that it was official. But if it was from the prosecutor's office, that narrows it down who could have issued it straight away. And it wasn't me. I cannot even with certainty that it did originate from the prosecutor's office. What? There's no telling where it started. There's a fair chance it came from higher up the ladder. Basically. I cannot give you any indication of who was behind it. You can't be serious. I can't do Sean Connery's accent. <laughs> All we can say for sure is that the order must have come from somebody in authority, I suppose. The likes of us on the ground, I swear, didn't bother with idle speculation. We just get the job done. I assigned the convert to a tree for the vigil, yeah. So, Mr. Vigil, you don't know anything about it at all? That's right. My only role here in the scheme was as a scapegoat. Scapegoat. That's right, isn't it, Governor? Some poor beggar had to be to take the rap for it. Wow, you just ruined a whole man's life! Alright then, who else did know about the plan? I'm not the first idea, Lottie. My part in the whole business was basically just dealing with the aftermath. 
But I wouldn't be surprised if there were other folk in the prison service who'd, give being, who'd been given similar orders. So you don't know who else was involved. I don't, uh, I don't like to make his voice. Uh, aye, that's right. All I can tell you is that tonight it actually happened. The person at the range was Dr. Stevens. Dr. Courtney Stevens? Or Dr. Scythe, as she's known now. <sighs> Why did I have to get caught up in such a terrible business? I was expecting to Didn't know of any plots. Did you not notice anything unusual happening in the lead up to that night? Oh, everything was unusual. Exception after exception. After all, it was the professor. The man that had terrorized the country as never before with his crimes. In order to hide his identity, he was forced to wear an iron mask over his head. Hideous treatment. The fellow was surprisingly docile for someone who'd taken the lives of five of the country's nobles. Being the chief warder, I was the only person permitted to approach his cell. I can still hardly believe that I was duped by my own country. I believe you jumped from the window of the governor's office when the jailbreak was blamed on you, didn't you? Rosh, Vigil. I cannot apologize enough. No, Governor, I don't believe you can. It won't change what happens. Ugh. And what else can you tell us about the situation, Governor Caden? <sighs> there, there are negotiations. But you've already acknowledged that the orders came from the prosecutor's office to arrange for the man's escape. There must have been some sort of negotiation. It's the only explanation. I well, be that as it may, I didn't ken nothing about that. You understand there's no place for telling what you don't know for sure. I can that much, I do. Then I presume you also know this. Not telling what you do know is a criminal offense. So you're just following orders, is that it? I'm afraid that won't absolve you of your guilt here. A man was still killed illegally even if he was a condemned criminal. You may very well be found complicit in murder, Governor. So that's what it's to be, is it? Even with the threat of conviction, you won't break your silence. All I did was carry out my own duty. He must be descended from the soldiers who accepted execution for a chrono without paperwork just because the chancellor said to do it. Oh! Yeah, probably. Stupid chancellor. Did you carry out the plan in its entirety? I did everything I could at the time. As you know, Genshin Asuki was shot dead in Lowgate Cemetery after the escape. Tell me, was that part of the plan too? My instructions were to do with getting the joke out of the jail and nothing more. I cannot tell you about, about what happened after that. Only, personally, I believe his death was the last part of the plan. Whoa! What's up, dude? Uh, pursue. My chair keeps sinking. Ah... Mr. Vigil, is something wrong? Ugh. Uh, yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? He's saluting now? What is it? Some sort of Barclay convention? Well, Governor Caden was just saying seemed to upset you. Did it bring something to mind, perhaps? For the last 10 years, I've completely blotted out the memories of that time from my mind. I was betrayed by my superiors in the name of my country. Just as my father was betrayed, it seems. But you see, thinking back now, I really can't imagine that the shooting of Mr. Asugi in the cemetery was ever part of the plan. What makes you think that? Well, it just doesn't make sense, does it? To make the man admit to crimes he didn't commit with the promise of a jailbreak, and only to kill him in the end. That's treachery of the worst kind. But the point is, if the intention was always to betray him, why would there be any need for all the chicaneries of an escape? Ah. Yes, that's quite true. If whoever negotiated with Asuki never intended to keep his or her end of the bargain, it would have been far simpler just to let the man be executed in prison as dictated by his sentence. It all happened in that vast chamber of secrets that is Barkley behind the high prison walls. I suppose nobody knows what really went on in the execution room now. Yes, it's an unsettling mystery, certainly. You know someone who does know? Dr. Courtney Scythe! <sighs> 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 
truth be told, there's a wee matter that's never quite made sense to me. I believe there was some kind of negotiation behind the jailbreak, a teen, Asogi, and a body at the top. It doesn't quite add up, does it? Governor Kaden, I must insist that you explain these doubts that you have. I am ending your formal testimony. Cats! I right, go on then. Seems to me the Japanese fella didn't have nothing to bargain with. Admitting to the crimes, that's what he had to bargain with, surely. I kind of see that myself. After all, did the prosecution know have conclusive evidence against the Carlier? This, you mean, discovered during the final victim's autopsy. There's every possibility this conclusive evidence was fabricated by Scotland Yard and the pros prosecutor's office. Possibilities are all very well, but nothing has been proven. You can holler about the misconduct in the trial ten years ago all you like. But if you can't establish that it happened with hard evidence, no one's going to listen. Um, aye, that's right. So what I'm saying is... Convict had nothing. Nothing he could use for any kind of bargaining at all. The witness makes an astute point. Logically, it would seem no negotiation could have taken place. And yet the plan to break the man out of prison was definitely put into practice. So he must have been armed with something that gave him an angle to negotiate. So Asuki-san agreed to confess to crimes because he was assured he'd be broken out of prison later. I really don't think that Kazuma-sama's father would have engaged in such negotiations. Then perhaps something compelled him to agree. What a terrible thing, using the law to legitimize such underhand dealings with a desperate man. Only to double-cross him in the end, it's quite the opposite of justice. I can't help feeling. There's something about this apparent negotiation that doesn't quite add up. Something doesn't quite add up, Mr. Narohoro? No, it doesn't, but I can't quite put my finger on what yet. Well, in that case, we must keep digging until we identify the problem. Okay, the Japanese Jack was found guilty. Director came from prosecutor's office. Signed the convict to chief order vigil here. Put the plan into action behind the scenes. I was responsible for Asuki right up until the night of his execution, but I knew nothing of any plot. I didn't know if there were negotiations between the convict and the prosecutor's office. It seems to me the Japanese fellow didn't have anything to bargain with. But he did have to have something because I remember Vigil saying that they they looked through Asugi's cell, through Genshin's cell or something, and they never found it. The ring was found in the stomach, so it's not that. These are all Gregson. Asuki papers? Hereby request that upon my death, any and all material possessions and wealth belonging to me in London be delivered to my son, Kazuma Asuki, in the Empire of Japan. With a deep sadness, I accept my fate in this foreign land and the knowledge that I will never see my homeland or family again, but I regret nothing about my chosen path. A group of friends of ours was having food wars. Food wars in terms of cooking or eating? Or throwing? The only things that could possibly have belonged to Genshin are the will, the sword, and the ring. But the ring was never sent back to Kazuma in Japan. There are two dark lines. Is it just the way that the ring was rendered? Can't examine that. And the sword. That has a small Oops! Pull the sword out again. Pull it out. Karma. And that, that bit's missing. Can't we like look inside? We can't look inside. Um. They said Domino's was good. I was like, these are the craziest Domino's on the planet. Okay. okay, okay. Domino's was bad years ago, but recently they got better. They're expensive, but they got better. Ugh. 
and their like um delivery tracking system so freaking accurate so like good man Domino's is pretty good Duraludon escaped. Um, didn't have anything to bargain with. Okay, walk through. Um, shoot, what was the walk through again? Um, balance and court. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is what I was thinking. Man, never second guess yourself. <laughs> Confessing under oath to murders he didn't commit on a verbal assurance of later being broken out of prison. Genshin Nasuki was taking an incredibly risky gamble. Very true. There was nothing to stop the British breaking their word and executing him behind closed doors anyway. Under normal circumstances, no man would stake his life on a gentleman's agreement like that. Which means that Mr. Asuki must have had a trump card. Something that guaranteed he wouldn't be betrayed. Some kind of weapon. Heavers, the fella couldn't possibly have anything like that. But you know what that he did, Governor? The Asuki Papers, the name given to the last will and testament of Genshin Asuki. Ah! It turns out that Mr. Asuki was hiding his will in his cell at Barkley. Chief Order Vigil caught him with it one day. You! You squirrel, did you, you wee rat? Did I not tell you to keep that a secret? You can't touch me now. Gar. Oh, uh, that. Oh, wow, that just skipped. Ahead. Okay, I'll try. Order me a pizza. You can't blame me for trying. Sorry. I was like, deep dish is amazing, and they said it was all tomato sauce. I was about ready to throw hands. I'm sorry, Regal. Deep dish is just tomato sauce. It's just tomato soup. I don't. I mean, the crust is very buttery, but it's not pizza. <laughs> when Mr. Vigil caught sight of that through Will through the bars of the convict cell, Mr. Asagi pleaded with the warder. All right, then, but watch on that paper. Last will and testament. This will is the only weapon I have left now. They keep saying weapon. The sword has to come into play somehow. Weapon. And after the convict had been killed following the elaborate pretense of the jello break, that document mysteriously disappeared, didn't it? Well, yes. All the prison warders searched through the belongings in the cell, but... That will was just nowhere to be found. As I understand it, it was an exhaustive, an exhaustive search was made for the document, which became known as the Asagi Papers. Governor Caden, I believe you ordered your prison staff to find it at all costs, didn't you? It... Would I be right in saying that you knew? You knew the so-called Asuki papers had the potential to make great waves somehow. Jins, what the blazes are you blethering about? The, the will was found, right and proper, in the fella's cell where a cell would be. But how can that be? Where in a cell? We all searched the place from top to bottom. Well, you didn't do a proper job, you peely wally galoot. You, you can't criticize me now. I shed it to your fault, did I know, you're a liar? Yes, you did. I have a document here. It's written in Japanese and reads the last will and testament of Genshin Asuki. Which means everything is as it should be. The cheese is under the sauce. There is way less sauce on a deep dish than on regular pizza. You just see the sauce more. No, I mean, I had deep dish before. I lived in Chicago for two years. It's, it's just, it's, it's not pizza. I'm sorry. Deep dish is not, not for me. Not quite, my lord. You see, there's an undeniable inconsistency here. What? What inconsistency? Mr. Asagi describes this document as the only weapon he had left. And yet, this will contains nothing of significance at all. Nothing that would have given the convict any leverage. Are you suggesting, my learned friends? That the last will on testament stored at Barkley Prison all these years is actually a fake. As has clearly been demonstrated already, what went on at Barkley Prison was far from above board. That 
last vilification by the defense was an affront to the entire British legal system. You're an affront to the British legal system! This absurd notion of a weapon is something for which we have only the former chief warder's word. Oh, excuse me. A man could quite easily be lying, or at the very least, sorely mistaken. What? No. I definitely heard him say that, I swear. Clearly we need to get to the bottom of this. We need to know exactly what happened with these so-called Asugi papers. A waste of time. If the will was fake, where's the real document? Mr. Visual was stabbed in the back by the judiciary ten years ago. He lost everything, very nearly his own life. And now you're going to do it again. You're ready to brand him a liar and turn your back on him without even letting him defend himself. It's clear the Barclay prison's hiding something. It's clear that the jailbreak was masterminded by somebody in the prosecutor's office. It's clear that some illicit negotiations took place. Is your lordship just going to cross over these obvious blah blah blah? What do you say? I'm sending you a phone right now. Regal! I had deep dish pizza. I know what it is. Ah, I must go on. The man's voice must be heard. It would seem that a vocal few here are utterly blind to the truth. Very well, then. Let the witness testify again. Tell the court precisely what you think you saw in the convict's last will and testament. Ye yes, sir, my lord. The only thing I could, like... The only thing I could remember about clearly about deep dish pizza that I liked was the buttery crust. The rest was just, like... It didn't ha it wasn't solid. It didn't have a pizza shape and firmness. Oh man, I should have just brought my big water bottle. I'm drinking a lot. And to you on Twitter. I'll take a look at it later. As the wars are responsible for contempt convicts, I attended to Mr. Asagi and kept watch over his cell. The night after he was found guilty in court, he was doing something with that with Will in his cell. He turned the cell inside out looking for it after the execution, but to no avail. I only found out about the Asuki papers when a directive came to tell me to impound them. The document was in the folds of the fellow's robe that was left in the cell. A kimono, I think it's called. Look at how little sauce that is. I've never had it. In his kimono? That's, that's a lie! We searched every inch of the man's cell. We looked through all of his clothes. It can't be true. Well, you know, Satisfy would call me a liar the once, eh, you wee waffinger? You almost made the man die. You shut your mouth. Huh. There's nothing you could do about it now. You don't have any hold over me anymore. Other than the hold you'd like to take on my cravats, of course. Is that what you're going to do, is it? Are you going to give me a good shake again? Or are you too scared? Ah! You're hiding something. You are so hiding something. Little and large. What a double act. I complied with Asuki's will as far as possible. All of his personal effects were delivered to his family home in Japan. As a courtesy to the homeland of the most notorious killer our country has ever seen. And we were much obliged. I can confirm that all of my father's belongings arrived safely. Why? You couldn't deny the handwritings that of your old man, eh? Yes, there's no mistaking that it's my father's brushwork. Really? And this last will and testament was the man's last weapon, was it? I think we could safely assume the conflict was merely prattling, knowing that his end was nigh. So, counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. I attended to kept watch over cell. He was doing so that with that will in the cell. And he pleaded with you not to report him, did he? Yes, that's right. I like the bend part you are, you didn't tell me a blatant breach of trust that was. I could see that the man had a noble spirit. I found myself wanting to treat him accordingly. But according to what you told us two days ago, the conflict had been strictly forbidden from having any writing materials whatsoever. Yes, you're quite right. Ah, so what exactly was the will and pens? That was before the man was remanded in Barclay, obviously. 
Yes, at the prosecutor's office under supervision of the relevant authorities. I personally instructed Asagi to make a will for the benefit of his family and homeland. His homeland. In that case, why was it found in a cell? What? <gasps> why was it found in a cell? Because they're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> oh my gosh, Strongheart, you're such a freaking liar. What do you mean by that? And you, Caden, you're a disgrace. Well, if it was penned at the prosecutor's office, you would have expected that it would remain there for safekeeping, surely. But, it's curious. There doesn't seem to be any obvious explanation for why it was subsequently found in the convict cell. It, oh, well. The defense makes an astute point. Well, Governor? Prison Governor cannot be expected to kin the inner workings of the prosecutor's office. In that case, Lord Strongheart, perhaps you can shed some light on the matter. I'm unable to offer an explanation here and now. Cause you're lying! I would have to consult with the notary responsible for the will at the time. But you clearly said that it was penned in the prosecutor's office before he went to Barkley, so why can't you say anything more? You liar. The fact that my father's will was discovered in a cell is clearly inconsistent with what was expected. I want to know why. Another inexplicable mystery, then. Well, um, the thing about that will... Uh, turned it inside out. The uh, directive came, telling me to impound them. And that directive came from the same source as the one instructing you about the jailbreak? Hey! Oh, that was weird. From the top levels of the prosecutor's office. What name was on it? I didn't ken before. Uh, I didn't ken now. All I can tell you is that my orders were to do everything in my power to find a document. The director said it had to be somewhere inside the fellow cell. Documents? Was that the wording? Document, not will? Aye, that's what it said. Am I clutching at straws here? I just wonder if it was really Genshin Asugi's last will and testament that the sender of that directive was after. Continue with your testimony then, witness. Wait, if this he's been called up as a suspect, wouldn't another judge take over? That's what I'm thinking! Like... He... I really feel like he is a terrible person to be a judge for this because I feel like he's so guilty! There are procedures and... Uh, hydrate coast. Oh yeah, I need to hydrate. And Mr. Asuki's kimono. Kimono? I the one he'd be brought with him when he was locked up. Yes, he was permitted to have his personal effects with him during his incarceration, I understand. Did Stream die? Are you for real? Nothing looks wrong. The heck? What's, ha what's happening? Oh no, why is it unstable? Oh no, why is it off? So weird. I don't even have that many tabs open. What? What? No. Weird. Hmm. Granted as much freedom as possible during the few days before his execution. Indeed, he had a number of items of personal significance, I remember. I was very reluctant to part with him. Some books, that kimono, his sword. His sword? Kaduma, the famous sword of the Asagi clan. It bears the soul of my family. I don't doubt it, but I wasn't really getting at that. Forget it being the soul of the clan. Could the man have had a more obvious weapon? Have some respect, Rudosuke. Respectful silence? The warriors carry firearms at all times, and the inmates have shackles on their ankles. You couldn't have hurt anybody with that thing. Still, he was allowed a sword, but no writing materials. Right. He wrote that will before he came to stay with us at Barclay, you see? Dr. Mikotobo was asked to bring the necessary Japanese writing implements to the prosecutor's office. A Suzuki inkstone, black sumi ink, and some hanash hanshi rice paper, no doubt. I was present when he wrote it. But I'm sorry to say, the letters look just like a squirming mass of jet black earthworms to me. Whoa. Shut up! Are you feeling faint, Mr. Vigil? Mr. Vigil. Sir! It was Scarlet, sir. What? Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to blurt it out like that.
Less swaying and more explaining would be helpful. Is something about the testimony we just heard? Have you recalled something of importance? Something of importance? Possibly, or possibly not. I'm unable to tell which way he's leaning, I'm afraid. My lord, the defense asked that Mr. Vigil be permitted to supplement his testimony. With this possibly or possibly not important detail. Permission granted. Go ahead, Mr. Vigil. Yes, it was Scarlet. Andrews has been caught. Congratulations. Do I put the jelly, then the toast, or, or the toast? What do I do? <laughs> you make the toast first, and then you put the jelly on. As I remember, the document was written in scarlet ink, but perhaps I'm mistaken. Scarlet, you say? Well, yes. I mean, I only caught sight of it for a brief moment, of course. But even by the dim light in the cell, I remember thinking it was an unusual color. At the very least, I'm quite sure it wasn't black. Witness! Is that really what you saw? Ah, uh, what? Sir? Um... Is something wrong, Lord Strongheart? I apologize. Continue. He knows something. What do you make of that, Mr. Nadohono? The Lord Strongheart to be so visibly shaken in that way. Ugh, didn't have her. You can plainly see the writing here. And it's as black as the Earl of Hell's waistcoat. Well, yes, you're right. Mr. Vigil, I'd like to confirm one point with you. Did you actually see the content of the document that Mr. Hasuki was holding that night? Oh, well, no. I mean, there was no time. As soon as he noticed me, he hid it behind his back. But it was definitely a will, was it? Yes, it was. That's what Mr. Asuki told me. The court need waste no further time on this matter. We have the will in question in our possession. There's nothing more to add. A will written in scarlet ink. What did Mr. Vigil really see Kazuma's father holding, I wonder? If you have an inkling, Mr. Naruhodo, you must present it to the court at once. That testimony doesn't give much away. But this will really was penned by Kazuma-sama's father. I wonder what he could have possibly have meant when he described it as a weapon. It started to sound very much like Mr. Asugi actually had nothing. But the plan to break him out of jail went ahead, which means he must have had some bargaining power. He must have been hiding something. It's the only explanation that makes sense. It's starting to sound like Mr. Asugi actually might have had something. Which is it, Mr. Narahodo? I'm not sure, but I feel as though I'm on the brink of understanding all this. Let's listen to all the information again and see what more we can learn. We can't overlook even the smallest detail. Absolutely. The stream go down again? Oh no. Why? I don't even have anything open. Stop it. Um... Okay. They keep highlighting weapon. He was allowed his sword. Gotta be something! Eh. Open it up. Open it up. Am, or am I just like crazy? Is there actually nothing in here? Mm. Okay, well, I'm getting impatient, so I'm just gonna look at the walkthrough. <laughs> Wait, wait, examine. Wait, 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 what? What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Sorry. I just... Okay, so I'm supposed to present... The autopsy report. Oh no, I went too far! Wait, but he didn't have the autopsy report. But this says to show the autopsy report. He wants to press statements like press finger sign against six. Once you have this, present Clint's autopsy report at statement six. Why? Why? Man. 
can. Okay, well, I guess I'll find out why. Scarlet colored writing is what you said you thought you saw, Mr. Vigil. And I believe that's exactly what you did see. What? Heaven's Gang, you knew evidence to say that. Have a look at this report. That's my brother's autopsy report. Yes, and there's something in here that's bothered me since I first read it. It states that scarlet colored ink stains were noted on the fingers of the victim's right hand! <sighs> yes, so it does. Scarlet ink? Now, I'm not familiar with the habits of British aristocracy, I freely admit. But I would hazard a guess that they don't go all around with ink stains on their fingertips, do they? Your wit is not appreciated. My brother was a well-bred and fastidious man. Should ink have sullied his fingertips, he would have cleaned them immediately. What is your point, Counsel? My point is this. Whatever Lord Clint Van Zeeks was writing in that unusually colored ink, it must have been directly before his death. Because he died before he had the opportunity to clean his hands. What? I remember something troubled me at the time. At the scene, the lid of my brother's inkwell was open. But Clint was punctilious about such things. It seemed unusual. And no document penned in the color of the ink that was in the inkwell was ever found. That is what Asogi had. That's what Genshin had. Something written by Clint. Why would he have something written by Clint? And then who killed him? Clint died with a sword. Here's what happened. Clint wrote something. He gave it to Genshin. Genshin left. Whoever killed... And then the Clint's killer came and cl killed him. And they're like, oh, let's blame it on Genshin because people saw him leaving the house or whatever. And... So the document had disappeared. Are you suggesting that the document my father had in his hand that night in the cell was the same document that Lord Clint Van Zeeks was writing moments before his death? Then it was... If Mr. Vigil's testimony is to be believed, it can only mean that, yes. Mr. Vigil, sir. When you spotted Mr. Asagi with the document in his cell, his precise words were as follows, were they not? Also, hey Kirby, how you doing? Happy Thursday, thanks for joining. All right then, but what's on that paper? A last fallen testament. This will is the only weapon I have left now. A last will and testament? Ah! Oh. If the conversation really did go as Mr. Vigil says, then what we know, uh, what we now know completely changes the meaning of what Mr. Asugi said. You really think... Mr. Vigil did indeed see the convict with a will. But it wasn't that of Genshin Asugi. It was the last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Zeeks! What? This... this is madness! My brother's last will and testament! That would mean that they had chosen to die. That is what it would mean, yes. No, impossible! That is utterly out of the question. Lord Van Zeeks. Clint was pursuing the professor. It consumed him day and night. Whatever happened, he would never have abandoned his investigation before its conclusion. Never! He wouldn't rest until the job was done, until the killer was caught. The idea that he would willingly accept his own death, it's obscene. And yet we can be sure that he was writing his will moments before his death. And that Genshin Asugi came to be in possession of that document. So what could the will possibly have contained? Clearly something that couldn't have been- couldn't be made public under any circumstances whatsoever. Because armed with that document, my father was able to negotiate with the judiciary for his life. It was something so damning that it prompted the powers that be to enact that daring jailbreak plot. Yes, there can be no question that the will contained information of utmost secrecy. Information of the utmost secrecy. Ah! No, it couldn't be. What? I've heard more than enough. Pursuing this notion of a phantom will nobody can attest to having seen serves absolutely no purpose. Phantom will. No, my lord, that's unacceptable. Did you say, counsel? 
The last will and testament that Genshin Asugi had in his possession was that of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. All the testimony and evidence presented to the court has logically led us to that as a possibility. We have a duty to pursue the line of reasoning to its conclusion. But with no possible means of knowing the contents of the document, there's no line of reasoning to pursue. You got two people with stakes in You got multiple people with stakes in this. We gotta keep pursuing. A reason why Lord Clint Van Zeeks, a man of high noble standing, would have chosen death. Information so secret, people in the judiciary would be willing to negotiate the jailbreak of a condemned killer. The only explanation that fits those facts is an unthinkable truth that turns absolutely everything on its head. But it's just too hideous. Mr. Naruhodo? However difficult the situation might become, you work with your client in pursuit of the truth. That's what you resolved to do when you entered the courtroom this morning, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Sato. So hold your head high and keep soldiering on. Yes, you're right. Ten years ago, in his final moments, Lord Clint Van Zeeks left behind a will. A will that Genshin Asugi was able to use as a weapon to negotiate his escape from prison. In all probability, the details in the will were related to the professor case. The defense's last statement is mere conjecture. What are you getting at, man? Yunosuke? As soon as these words come out of my mouth, there's no going back. I believe that the last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Zeeks was, in fact, a report, an accusation, a confession? <laughs> Left behind a will. Will that Genshin Asuki was able to use as a weapon to negotiate his escape from prison. All probability the details in the will were related to the professor case. So, would it be a report? A report? Yeah. An accusation? It could be any one of these. But let me save. Mm. I'm gonna say it was a report. It seems to me that it was probably some kind of report. Some kind of... Well, remember that Lord Clinton Van Zeeks was a well-bred and fastidious man. Knowing the end was near, he probably wanted to tie up the loose ends of all his outstanding business. Nope. My brother had no outstanding business. Hmm? Clint would have had a full account- okay, yeah. Uh, in any case, a bit of a- yeah. Ink color. Come on, you know, I know you, you've seen the heart of all this, haven't you? Unthinkable truth that turns absolutely everything on its head? I'm wondering if it's a confession? But what would he be confessing to? I'll try confession though. <gasps> Catch the fleshling! Fletchings are cute! Case, ba -da -ba, ba -da -ba -ba. Oh wait, what am I doing? I can I can load. Well, no. I only have one strike. I don't have to load. Those in fact... I'll try confession. The music stopped. You're right, it's a confession. To what? You can do this, Mr. Narahodo. I believe that what Lord Clint Van Zeeks actually penned that day was a confession. A confession? Regarding the mass murderer known as the Professor and his true identity. <laughs> Enough, Counsel. What are you saying? Do you even realize? No, I don't. <laughs> a confession about the true identity of the Professor. That, that would mean. Lord Van Zeeks, I appreciate this must be hard to take in. But it's the only explanation that fits. Am I still not- The fact that he wrote something before he died. Well, he could just be like, yo, I found out the real identity of the professor. Because I think the professor is 
Strongheart. Somehow. I mean, Strongheart is a part of this somehow. He's hiding everything. The killer that terrorized London a decade ago and became known as the Professor, the man believed to have murdered five members of the aristocracy, wasn't Genshin Asugi at all. No, you can't be suggesting. It was in fact the man believed to have been the fifth victim. <laughs> Clint was the professor? Gah. Ah! It's finally open, isn't it? Pandora's box. The great Van Zeke's family, David, and Lord Clint Van Zeke's, he was a paragon of justice in the capital. But he was actually a mass murderer, a perpetrator of atrocities in the vilest nature. If the general public ever found out, law and order in this country would be finished. My... my brother. Oh, this is too awful. Poor Lord Van Zeke's. I wonder, though, did he never suspect? Mr. Nadohodo? Lord Barrack Van Zeeks is a brilliant prosecutor. Is it conceivable that he didn't realize what his older brother really was? Did Van Zeeks actually kill people? Well, they said that all the murders were done by a dog. But Van Zeeks didn't get his hands dirty personally. Way to play a cool dude, definitely not guilty or something. Order in the court. Lord Van Zeeks. The professor made use of enormous hound as his murder weapon. Tell me, did your brother own a dog? Yes, he did. Baldum. He was a well-known hunting dog. People called him a giant. I don't believe this. Excuse me. My brother would go hunting in the forest of the grounds behind the house. He always took Baldum. After Clint's death, the creature passed away too, almost as if he were following his master. He was a magnificent hunting dog, worthy of the jewel-studded collar around his neck. That collar was Clint's dog's collar. I was like, in the beginning of this, of the stream, I was like, yo, I remember there was a bloody dog collar. I don't remember whose name was written on it. It's Clint's. Uh, a jewel-studded collar? That's right. Though sadly, some years ago now, it was stolen by a thief who broke into the house one night. A jewel set of collar stolen by a thief. It so happens that myself and my colleagues have come across such a collar during our time in London. How could you? There was an old emblem attached to the collar too, made of pure gold. Okay, it wasn't a name, but it was that emblem and they're like, oh, Van <laughs> It was topped with a small crown and bore an ornate capital letter B. What? An emblem bearing the initial B. Oh my, you know it? It's the insignia of the Baskerville family. What? The Baskerville? Why is that name coming up now? Baskerville is the family name of my late brother's widow. That pure gold emblem was an heirloom which Clint acquired upon their marriage. There can be no doubt, then, the color you've described was Balmond's. The family insignia of Lord Clint Van Zeke's widow. There was a considerable amount of blood on the collar when we saw it. Since we know the dog was used for hunting, it could have been from its quarry, of course. But it could equally have been from human prey. <sighs> Crazy, every one of these cases are related to one long story. Are the other games like this too? Uh, no, it's not. This is why it's so shocking that... That Great Ace Attorney 2 relates back to Great Ace Attorney 1. That characters and cases and, like, events carry over in both of them. It's insane! So, in fact, the person responsible for these murders of nobles and royals was a noble himself. And that threatened to be an enormous scandal that would have irrevocably destabilized British society. My father knew that and was using it to negotiate his way out of the unjust charges brought against him. But at the very last hour, those he bargained with betrayed him, slaying him mercilessly on foreign soil. Well, can you deny it, Lord Strongheart? Ten years have passed. 
And still now, the six million inhabitants of our great capital rest easy believing that justice was done. That though his anonymous... An anonymity remains. The diabolical murderer was caught and executed. Very well then. You may have the truth. Edgeworth's second game, Investigations 2, also brings the cases together. Oh, I've never played Edgeworth's games. I only played um the three Phoenix Wrights um, and Apollo Justice and now Great Ace Attorney. I should play Ed Edgeworth's games. Tell me then. Tell me what Clint really was. Lord Clint Van Zeeks was too pure of heart. When he became a prosecutor and went in pursuit of the black roots of crime, he drove himself into a corner. He came to the uncomfortable realization that to fight the most fiendish of criminals requires one to become even more fiendish oneself. Clint. Edward's first game is all right. The second game is where it's really good, which unfortunately never got officially localized. No! The 19th century was truly a miraculous hundred years for the Great Britain, and indeed the whole world. New industry, new technology, and with the birth of the Metropolitan Police Service, new law and order. But though these dazzling new developments meant even deeper shadows were cast on society. Water sullied by factories, air thick with noxious fumes and crime, growing daily to fill the darkness. Lord Clint Van Zeeks made it his mission to, to combat to combat that darkness. But as time went on, it slowly ate at his soul until eventually he was consumed. But Clint was the professor. It's ironic, really, and somewhat surprising that the truth has once again been unearthed by a Japanese. Once again? What do you mean? Ten years ago, your father, Genshin Asuki, turned up at my office one night. Professor. Yes, beyond all shadow of a doubt, you must issue a warrant to search his home at once. You'd be absurd. The man comes from one of our country's most illustrious families. He's a paragon of justice here in the capital. Yes, that's the point. That's why none of you British can see it. He's using his noble status as a diversion whilst he commits these atrocious crimes behind the scenes. You have evidence. Nothing definitive as yet. But he keeps an enormous savage hound on the estate. We need the full support of the judiciary for this. We're up against a member of the aristocracy. A large family estate has a fierce guard dog. You should know that's commonplace here in Britain. I'm sorry, but I can't possibly put Scott and Yard onto this based on the tenuous accusation of a visiting student. Just like Mother 3. I hope we see more releases. I would like to try the rest. I don't think Mother 3 will ever be localized. Whoa, this is a new art style. Yeah, it was an interesting art style. Why is my controller kind of wet? Oh, from the condensation of my water bottle. Haha. <laughs> so I turned down Asogi's plea. And as a result, he took it upon his... Uh, I missed it. He took it upon himself to visit Van Zeke's mansion on his own. We can only imagine now what happened between the two men. And we know the outcome, of course. Lord Clint Van Zeke's perished. I don't believe this. So in actual fact, Cosmo Summer's father did? He made the late Lord Van Zeeks meet the same fate. He put a permanent end to the professor killings. He did not! It was a western blade! His dad, Genshin Asuki, has a Japanese blade! By taking the drastic measures of ending the perpetrator's life. As soon as I heard, I hurried to the mansion. When I arrived, it was easy to grasp what had happened. As soon as he heard, he heard to the match. He killed Bat. He killed Clint. And what about the will? Asuki must have already taken it. Nothing of that nature was found at the scene. We had no idea of the existence of such a document at that time. It's not it. That's not the. That's not the end. Genshin didn't kill Clint. I was the only person who knew the true identity of the professor. So, I resolved to keep it a secret and to guard the secret to the bitter end. But why would you know about the identity of the professor? So you're admitting to it, that you're behind it all. It was you then who pinned the crimes on my father. I did what needed to be done in order to protect the law and order of the British Empire. Even if that meant employing an unforgivable ruse. 
Then it was you who arranged this fabricated evidence. I ordered that detective to take care of it, whilst keeping the truth from her naturally. Rexon? Obviously, he opposed me at first. Hurry off your walker! You can't do something like that! There's no question it was Oski who murdered Lord Van Zeeks. The house staff had made statements they saw the man running from the mansion that night. Yes, well, I've no doubt it was that Japanese fella. We haven't the shred of conclusive evidence against the man. And worse than that, he doesn't keep a dog, so we're short of a murder weapon to boot. And we're short on time, Gregson. We must put a stop to this man's rampage for the good of the country. We'll use whatever needs necessary. Do I make this look clear, detective? Fly me. There's some weird scenes in Mother 3 that make it so I don't think they'll ever make it out. I mean, there were some weird scenes in games that got localized in America, like... Take a look at Shadow Hearts. They have literal Wang monsters. It, it could happen. So that night ten years ago, when I was attacked by those thugs in the back streets, and Genshin's ring was taken, that was him, was it? That was Gregson and some hired help. And the detective handed the stolen ring to Dr. Wilson, who feigned its discovery from the victim's stomach during that autopsy. And in the light of that decisive evidence, Mr. Asuki was found guilty of the charges brought against him. However, behind the scenes, he had actually already struck a deal with his accusers, in which he agreed to silently accept the charges. But I just don't believe that part. As far as I knew the man, my father despised such underhand dealings. It was extremely easy to make him comply. You see, he had one crippling weakness. What weakness? Isn't it obvious? It's you, Kazuma Asogi. Me? Your new desire to return to your home, Nanosuke. What? But here you have a 14 year old son. Agree to cooperate and accept your guilt without contention, and you will see Japan and your son again. You. you scoundrel! Whether you choose wisely or not, there will be a close trial by order of Her Majesty. Whatever rash claims you might make in court will have no trouble in stifling them. There's only one outcome for you, Asuki the gallows. Don't forget, I still have a weapon at my disposal. A document revealing a truth that I know you're desperate to keep hidden. This had to escape my mind, which is the only reason I'm willing to bargain with you. I only want to protect this country's law and order, you understand? No, you don't! You just want to... You want to do something for your own self-serving purposes and needs. So it's to be, Asuki. Ah, Kazuma. Poor Gregson, for real. I think Mother 3 scenes are way worse, like way worse. Mother 3 fans translation took almost a decade. The game was absolutely not programmed to be localization friendly at all. Ooh, wow. I sh I want to play Mother. It sounds very interesting. He, he did it for me. And I told him at the time, my motive was simply to protect Britain from the damage the truth would do. To protect this country's law and order at any cost. I've never dared let myself even consider this possibility until now. But in the light of all this treachery, I have to ask. The mastermind behind the Reaper of the Bailey. Was it you, Lord Male Strongheart? A rather brilliant idea, wouldn't you say, Lord Barak Van Zeeks? But the spirit of your late brother, that paragon of justice, should return to reap justice for a sibling. Could there be a more appetizing tale for London's masses, I ask you? What the heck are you saying? What brazen... I knew that you'd play the part to perfection. But your role really wasn't that of the embodiment of death. No, you were London's guardian angel. An angel with bloody hands? I think not. Those who had cooperated with me already were only too happy to participate in my plan. Inspector Gregson, Dr. Wilson. My minions worked tirelessly to ensure that the finger of guilt could never come to rest on you. It's all thanks to them that you were exalted as the demigod the Reaper became. Okay, no. What he's trying to do now is be like, I did it for the good of the country. Look, all these guys were put away for good so they don't have to commit crimes again. When in fact, he's doing it just to be like, yo, 
Look at how good crime, like how much crime has been lowered since I became whatever chief justice, whatever stupid thing. But the fact is, you killed lots of people over 10 years. And I don't think Gregson did this willingly because if he wanted this to happen, why would he choose now to go to Paris? And Wilson died. So they were not doing this willingly. Strongheart's still hiding something. But Dr. Wilson left Britain four years ago when he was invited to work in Japan. That's right. But I had to employ the services of his young protege after that. Dr. Courtney Scythe. Dr. Scythe. And we know she was blackmailed! So what were the execu execution of the presser at the subsequent reign of the Reaper of the Bailey? I successfully safeguarded law and order in our mighty capital for the past decade. That is everything. It is not! It is not! You can't make yourself look to be the good guy! My lords, ladies, and gentlemen, I do hereby confess, it was I who sired the concept of the Reaper. However, let me say in my defense. It was all for the preservation of law and order across the entire empire. Nope. No. 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 Beyond these four walls, nobody need know the truth. Even Her Majesty must be protected from this. I trust you all appreciate the importance of my request. It is of course for the good of the country. Can he do this? Can the trial really end now? I have one last question. For the accused, Lord Van Zeeks. What? Of course, I know that you're a highly accomplished prosecutor, so I find it hard to believe that you didn't have any doubts at all. That you never suspected your older brother. I don't think translation is the main issue with Mother 3. I think that Nintendo can do it, no problem. I think the... The Majipsy? Huh? Gassy Toes? Oh! Did you hear me squeaking in my chair? Sorry, that was my chair. Yes, the same thought occurred to me. It was only once, but yes, I couldn't say that I never had my doubts. My brother's sense of justice was extremely strong. Perhaps too strong, I observed. At that time, there were members of the aristocracy who were bleeding the country dry for their own gain. And since they were nobles, they were untouchable. For my brother, it was a great source of great turmoil. And coincidentally, at the time, the professor began his terrifying reign. During the time of the professor killings, my brother did not appear to be himself. And that made you suspect? Yes. But there was only once, not more. Only once? Really? Clint wasn't the culprit. That was my conclusion at the time. And I still believe that now. Do you have any evidence to support that idea? The third victim was the Lord Chief Justice at the time. It was he who had recognized my brother's potential and trained him as a prosecutor. No matter what the circumstances, it's unthinkable that my brother could have killed this random- Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! The Lord Chief Justice! Who became Chief Justice now? Strongheart! Strong- Oh! Oh! And Strongheart knew the identity of the professor! He was making Clint kill all the people. Ah! Now we know why the detective was willing to let Gina take the blame and go to prison. Yeah, I'm not letting that one go. <laughs> My point being, Mother 3 was originally developed with zero intention to be localized. Well, yeah, I think um, a lot of Japanese games are just like, yeah, we're just making it for Japan. We don't care about what other outside audiences think. It's you know, it's for our enjoyment. Screw what you guys want. They don't- they didn't really care about localization at the time, but now things are like more global. 
So now they're just like, yeah, like worldwide simultaneous release for every language. No matter what, it's not—it's something like my brother could have killed this random mentor. That will do. Neither Clint Van Zeeks nor Genshin Asuki still walk this earth. However much we debate this matter now, we cannot hope to reach a conclusion. But... There are only two extant pieces of evidence from the time. The woebegone ring that acted as the incriminating evidence to condemn Genshin Asuki. The three-page last will and testament penned in black ink and left behind by the man. The wretched truth of what happened is exactly as I have explained. It'll require a lot of effort to localize it at this point for an extremely niche game series. That being said, I won't complain if it happens, albeit almost impossible. I think the reason why it won't be localized is because of the Medjipsy. I don't know what the Medjipsy is. Later today, I will present myself at the Ministry of Justice for whatever sanction is deemed appropriate. That is all. Court is adjourned. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. We ain't ended this here. Fess up to your crimes. Thank you, Kazuma. Me? If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have made this 11th hour discovery. What discovery? My lord. I'm afraid I must insist the trial continues. I beg your pardon? As the court has been reminded today already, we must stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth. And to that end, one particular statement made by somebody in this courtroom moments ago revealed a very subtle contradiction. What contradiction? But all I did was ask for the ask the accused one simple question. Well, it began with Lord Van Zeeks and his recollection about his brother. But Lord Strongheart didn't permit the defendant to speak at length. I merely pointed out that we can draw no further useful conclusions here, so where on earth is the contradiction? One of them definitely just said something contradictory. It's time to identify who. Um. Mm. I'm gonna say it's Strongheart, but let's look at the... the... Ha-ha! Strongheart. Aha, I guess. It was Lord Strongheart, I'm sure of it. Something he said was slightly off. Come on, Yosuke, think back over his words. Find the problem! The clean ravering stroke engine also can still walk this earth. And with much we debate this now, we cannot hope to reach a conclusion. There are only two extant pieces of evidence from the time. You will be gone bring that extant to crucial the evidence. Three paged last will and testament! Three paged! How many pages was Asugi's will? Two! Bam, bam, bam. Lord Strongheart, would you care to explain? Explain what, Council? Among the statements you made just a few moments ago, something you said was inconsistent with a certain piece of evidence we have. Inconsistent. And whilst an inconsistency remains, the defense has a right to pursue an explanation. Yunosuke, what? Let me warn you about the statements you are making, Council. They may very well prove fatal. You claim my words contained a contradiction. Which, with which piece of evidence, I asked? Boom! It's Kirby. Kirby said something contradictory. Press him! <laughs> Mr. Kirby! <laughs> Why were you lying? <laughs> this here is the last will left behind by Mr. Asugi. The two-paged will. What? Yet moments ago, your precise words were... The three-page last will and testament. Ah. Could it be that originally... There was a third page? For a moment, I thought perhaps you'd identify something worthwhile, but it's a mere trifle, I see. A trifle? Cover the Kaden. Eh, what can I do for you, sir? You were present when the Japanese man penned his last will and testament. Oi, that was there for sure. Well, I remember the black worm like squirrels, like, to this day. And I'm quite certain, my lord, that there was a third page at the time. Oh, sucker, you've been got! 
Only the first two pages were the actual will, though. If I mind correctly, the third was a message to his lad back in Japan. For legal purposes, we required only his will. And we wouldn't have wanted any uncomfortable words about Britain to get back to Japan, eh? So it was decided that the third page ought not be sent. How dare you make that decision? I had a right to know what it said, to hear my father's final words to me. The courtroom is no place for sentimentality, counsel. As it happens, I have the third page of the document with me here now. How? Oh no, why? Why am I offline again? A freak? This... Uh, I have like nothing open. What the heck? Why is this happening? Ugh. Oh. Has too many tabs up? No, I closed everything before I started. So weird. My father's message! It will be given to you at the end of these proceedings. It'll be too late once the trial's over. We need to know what it says now. Even the slightest thing may give us a vital clue. My lord. The defense calls for Genshin Asuki's last words to his son to be read out loud before the court now. The request is denied. The inevitably maudlin words can be of no consequence now. Shut up! It has to be read. Prosecution agrees. The court should know the content of that message. Every possible piece of evidence must be thoroughly examined. Very well then. Governor Caden. You will read the third page of the document for all present to hear. Yes, sir. Only, I should point out, my lord, that I cannot actually read worm language. Who's saying this? This beautiful handwriting? Shame on you, Barry. Oh, Mikotoba! Are you one of those people who constantly have like 30 tabs open? I don't have 30 open. I have like 15, okay? JT barring McDonald's Wi Fi. <laughs> if I could be of assistance here, I would be happy to translate the words into English for the court. Father! You're still here, are you, Dick Dr. Mikotoba? Naturally, I consider myself a member of the judiciary, albeit a lonely one. But perhaps I should quietly withdraw after I've translated Genshin's message. Your cooperation is much appreciated. Did he say worm language? Yeah, because he says the letters look all squiggly so he can't read it. I almost heard you say it. No, I didn't say that. Kazuma, the truth is shrouded in darkness. A darkness only our clan's great sword can pierce. Mighty Kaduma, twist thy head and watch them fall. All thy mortal foes. That's the end of the message, it would seem. A haiku poem? Twist thy head? Father. What is Kaduma? The name of the Asuki clan's famous sword. A razor-sharp blade known to all. Passed down for generations. It embodies the Japanese spirit. It's not known to me. <laughs> It's the katana sword that was submitted as evidence earlier in these proceedings. The one worn by the prosecution counsel when he confronted Inspector Gregson. Details of the Oski papers have been updated in court record. I need to get back to my learning Japanese and writing. All these procrastinations are beginning to try my patience. Adjournment of this court is long overdue. But I still gotta get you, man. I gotta get you. Oh, now it shows three papers. Mighty Karuma, twist thy head and watch them fall. I lie mortal foes. It is a haiku. Now is there something in the sword? They keep highlighting armed and weapons, so I'm like, is there something about the sword? <gasps> Mighty Karuma, twist thy head and foes. That's the proper way to use the sword, is it? Maybe I should try it. It hurts my neck, that's the trouble. Uh, Mr. Matahoro, if I might make a suggestion, I think perhaps it doesn't mean your head. Oh, I once studied history and development of the katana some time ago, and as I'm sure you're probably aware, the sword's head is part, of, uh, part at the very end of the hilt. It's written as head in Japanese, but it's pronounced as kashida, I believe. Kashida? So Mr. Worst, Asagi's words really mean twist the butt of the hilt? You don't think. <gasps> Look what's inside it! Is that a tightly matched sheet of parchment? What color is the ink? Red! Posture check. Haiku for you. 
Kirby is so cool. He speeds runs so many games. He's a real neat dude. There you go. <laughs> Scarlet Ring! It's written in Scarlet Ink! I penned this, my last will and testament, in the final moments before my inevitable and willing death. This... This is it, isn't it? Mr. Naruhodo, look at the signature at the end! Clint Van Zeeks, and the date, 10 years ago, on that fateful night. So for 10 years, it's been silently concealed inside Karuba and nobody knew. The last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. Wait. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This is unbelievable. Clint Van Zeeks' will has been entered in the court record. I was wondering if you'd read the haiku from the will. <laughs> I mean, I had to check again. Oops, I didn't mean to. Protecting great secrets between those sorts of duties. Well, I could believe that. Kazuma could Okay. I got a thing. Cool. Like someone with the weight of the clan's long and noble history on his shoulders. Oh. Read the will! Wait! Wait! Why can't I read it? I can't examine it! As the presiding judge, I have been as accommodating as possible of the will of the courtroom. However, despite all that, no new information has what? Has come to light. I just found the will! In pursuit of justice, Lord Clint Van Zeeks tragically lost all sense of morality. When he murdered his former mentor, clearly he was already devoid of his normal faculties. Genius! How dare you! I refuse to believe that of my brother. Too much time has passed. We cannot ever hope to know more than we do now. Especially since the alleged will that he penned in his final moments appears to have been lost forever. I just got the will. <laughs> ah! Lord Stronghearts, you appear to be in something of a hurry to wrap things up. I wonder why. Yeah, dude! We've heard you state time and again during these proceedings. That everything you did was in the interests of protecting British law and order. And I stand by that. Without the Reaper, we could never have achieved the reduction in crime the capital has seen. What about Inspector Gregson, then? And Dr. Wilson. They were no criminals. You used them to achieve your ends, and then you had them killed. However you dress it up, there was nothing fair or just about that. Lord Strongheart, what exactly is it that you're hiding? Dr. Mikotoba. Were you not to quietly withdraw after the translation of your former associate's will? In this courtroom, no argument carries weight unless it is supported by evidence. And it would seem that the defense has no more evidence to present. In which case... I hereby order all discourse from these proceedings to be struck from the record. It's my last chance. Mr. Naruhodo, I have to present some decisive evidence now or it's all over, but can I? Yes! Wait, my lord. As it happens, the defense does have evidence to present. What? Don't be absurd. There's nothing of relevance remaining from the time. It's high time that you realize something, my lord. This gentleman has an uncanny habit of producing evidence at the final hour that had escaped everyone else's attention. Nonsense. What is it, Yudosuke? What do you have? I dare say... The final decisive piece of evidence that will reveal the whole truth about this rotten tale. How can you? Decisive. Well, it would appear that there's no escaping it now, my lord. Let it be so, then. Present whatever you think you have that can sum this decade-old enigma, if you're capable. What exactly is this evidence that the defense claims to be so decisive?! There is a single piece of evidence that can clarify what really happened ten years ago. The last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. Ha! A wonderfully astute observation, I'm sure. But in case it had escaped your notice, that document was lost ten long ago. That's right, it was. Only... I have it right here. Discovered just moments ago. Impossible. That can't be. 
Everything that's happened comes back to this will. This documents. Is the key that will unlock the entire mystery. You're nervous now, cause I finally got you. My brother's last will and testament. Where did you find that? It was rolled up inside this. Inside Karuma? That ultimate weapon Genshin Asugi obtained has lain undisturbed in the hilt of the sword all these years. Just waiting for the right time to emerge and reveal the truth. The signature and the seal certainly look official. My god, it's true. It's my brother's handwriting. There can be no mistake. I forbid the contents of that document from being read out. Do you hear me? I strictly forbid it! Guess who's gonna read it? You can't do that, my lord! This document could explain everything! That document could literally destroy the meaning of justice in this country! Of justice in this country? Or you! You need to leave, sir! I demand that you hand it to me at once! No, no! Why? What are you trying to hide? Could it be that you already know what's written on this page? Ugh, what are you implying? Quarters adjourned with immediate effect. Clear the courtroom! Do that, my lord. And you'll suffer a fatal blow as Lord Chief Justice. I beg your pardon? Forcibly ending a trial without good reason? And not any trial, a closed trial by order of Her Majesty the Queen. To defy the monarch's will is treason. Urgh. Get bent! Where Clint Van Zeeks really did pen a will that day. It's exactly as the young Japanese man said. Read it out now. We have a right to hear what's in the will. A right and a duty. Well, well, my lord. It would rather appear as though proceedings aren't going to go quite as you'd hoped. Kill him. <laughs> I like to think that he had the katana in his hand and had it sent to his family without realizing what was inside. No, I think that's exactly what happened. Like when, um... When Daily Vigil saw what um, what Genshin was doing, Genshin was putting the will into the sword. Because he was like, hey guys, my last will and testament, have my stuff sent to Japan so that it's out of Britain. So that Clint's will is safe. He, he knew exactly what he was doing. You fools. Go ahead, Yunosuke, read it. The prosecution gives its full support. Very well then. No, for God's sake! No, get wrecked. Get dunked on. I pen this, my last will and testament, in the final moments before my inevitable and willing death. The hour is 11 p.m. and I sit at my writing desk in my office. My good friend Asogi stands at my shoulder. He has expressed his intent to invoke the dying ritual of the duel that I may depart this world with honor. An honor of which I am utterly undeserving. The Japanese are a truly merciful people. Sure. I, Clint Van Zeeks, lord of the manor of the Van Zeeks estate, hereby confess the following. I am the killer who has come to be known in society as the professor guilty of four counts of murder. I will not here discourse the corruption of rife among the aristocracy, which is to me as one of them so apparent. However, six months ago, I took the life of a member of the House of Lords at the heart of the depravity. A demon who habitually sacrificed the common man to further his own interests abusing his posi position of power. The law is impotent against such vile avarice. Only a fellow demon can rid society of this menace. That demon was my quarry, upon whom I willingly set my great hound. But though I am a hunter of some experience, I am a poor felon, it seems. My guilt was at once recognized by another, and I became subject to his extortion! Damn! Strong Blackmailed Clint! I keep moving over to the left, I need to, go to move over to the right. Ah, uh, like, getting out of view of my camera. He held over me the threat of exposing my wicked crimes to my beloved wife and brother. Under that threat, I have done this man's bidding for months now, killing those he demanded I kill, as I watched my former mentor perish before my eyes at the jaws of the hound I commanded. 
I realized that I had lost the last shred of decency within me and sunk to the level of a wild beast. There is no path back to the light. Be it I or my dear friend Asuki who dies this night, I am eternally damned. To my extortioner, male strongheart! May you feel the jaws of the beast at your throat every time you swallow. Strongheart likes big boobies and head type. What? So now we know. Yes, Clint Van Zeeks was a murderer. But somebody was directing him and naming his victims. His extortioner, Lord Male Strongheart, it was you. Lord Strongheart, a moment ago. You claimed that what the court had just heard could destroy justice in this country. But you weren't trying to protect justice at all. All you were trying to do was conceal the secret of your true nature and the countless lives you've sacrificed up until now. It just didn't make sense to me that the third victim, the former Lord Chief Justice, was my brother's benefactor and, and a man of lofty principles. As I said, Clint had no possible reason to kill the man. But you did, didn't you, Lord Strongheart? To eliminate the man who stood between you and the office you'd set your sights on. So you used your own hunting dog, Lord Clint Van Zeeks, to take him down. It had to be done. London's unsavory shadows are deep and the arm of the law fails to reach their depths. Crime must be cut off at the roots, but the Lord Chief Justice at the time couldn't see that. He was weak. Lofty principles, you say? Tantamount to cowardice, if you ask me. Which is why I took his place. In order to fight the crime, he was allowed to spread like wildfire. By murdering the man? The Reaper. The Professor. The name makes no difference. As I have explained countless times already, it was all done for the furtherance of law and order in London. Are you going to legitimize the murder of my father now, too? Ah, Genshin Asogi. Well, that was unfortunate. I'd fully intended to send him back to Japan as we'd agreed. I don't believe you. It was you, wasn't it? You killed him! No, it wasn't me who took your father's life. Then who? On the night following his mock execution, I went to Lowgate Cemetery at 3 in the morning with Jigoku. Judge Jigoku?! There had to be a collaborator on the Japanese side to manage Asagi's treatment after his repatriation. Jigoku had fierce ambition. It made him easy to manipulate. That's how he got him! Ten years ago, after he stood trial for the destruction to the witness stand, I had words with him. When I told him in the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs could be his, he couldn't agree fast enough. Seishiro, you fool. As you know, Asagi escaped prison in a closed casket and was subsequently interred. We intended to dig him out of his grave before he ran out of air. But sadly, all did not go to plan. Ah... Uh... Enoch Drebber showed up! There was an unexpected visitor to the cemetery with his own ideas about digging up graves. A man who witnessed what nobody was supposed to see. Enoch Drebber. Of course, I knew grave robbers frequented London cemeteries. But that grave on p that particular night. Blast! If people find out the convict wasn't really executed, scandal will rock the very foundations of the Empire. Then, then what do we do? Shoot him, Mr. Jigoku. Shoot Asogi at once. He can't live now that this has happened. He has to go. What are you talking about? You had an agreement. You promised him he could return to Japan. Everything has changed now. If the truth got out about this, both of us would be finished forever. Come on, Jigoku. Do it. Pull the trigger. Shoot! He didn't want to get his hands dirty. He wants to say, Yo, Technically, I didn't kill him. I never killed anyone. They chose to do it themselves. That's what he's doing. Jigoku shot Osugi from the shadows. The grave robber was so close the blood sprayed over his coat. He fled as fast as his legs would carry him. Then Jigoku and I put Osugi's body back in the grave from which he'd just emerged. When I later learned of the waxwork modeler's presence at the scene as well, I made a swear to two things. Never to remove the professor's mask, and never to speak of the events of that night. And with that, the secret was buried along with Asugi's corpse. So, now you know what really happened in Lowgate Cemetery that night.
you gigantic scumbag. Nian Fu has been caught. Congratulations. It was Jigoku, your Japanese acquaintance who killed Asuki in the end, you see. He claimed to be the man's friend, but when push came to shove, he pulled the trigger. Just before Mr. Jigoku left the courtroom earlier, he said that the assassin exchange proposal was a demand from his British counterpart, not a request. So you coerced him too, using what happened in the graveyard. By that time, Jigoku was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, negotiating international treaties with Britain. You can imagine what would have happened if it came to light he'd murdered a compatriot ten years earlier. He would have lost everything. I reminded him of that. How do you sleep at night? These past ten years, I fought tirelessly with the darker recesses of London's criminal underworld. And I've used whatever means necessary to ensure that justice prevails and law and order reign supreme. That couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is, you haven't fought crime at all. How dare you! I saved Clint Van Zeeks from dishonor and his death! Whilst behind the scenes, you systematically buried anyone who stood in your way. And then, you made my father take the blame. It was unavoidable! It was the only way to protect our justice system and public order! No, it wasn't! Let's not forget the others you had killed as well. Setting the defendant up as a reaper to cover up the truth behind the murders of countless more. That's... ENOUGH! Do you have any idea of the conniving that led to the acquittals of those wretched criminals? You have to fight fire with fire! Our courts can't function without a reaper! Can't you see all I've done for this country? This has been my struggle! You've done nothing! It's Lord Van Zeeks who worked tirelessly and justly in court, whilst enduring the disgrace of the Reaper name. And the Inspector Gregson, fraught with anguish for having sullied his hands through a desire to do the right thing. Not to mention Genshin Asuki, who risked his life going in pursuit of the truth you tried to hide. No, the darker recesses of London's underworld were largely filled by you. You little... When will we get to your thick skulls? That it was all for the queen and country? I'm tired of that excuse. You've consistently twisted the truth for bargaining power to make others do your bidding. Nothing more. Oh, his eyes. Woo. People who willingly twist the truth and coerce others have no right to call themselves part of the judiciary. I strongly suggest you don't ever talk of justice again. Gurgar. Ah. That is a really weird pose to see like that. Catch Pokemon? No, I'm busy reading this. I'm almost done. I'm so close. Well, well, well. Dear me, my good fellows, dear me. A well-deserved round of applause, I think, for a quite marvelous performance. What are you talking about? Those delightfully grave expressions, that beautifully pronounced Queen's English. Really, our friends from the Far East are quite the picture of industriousness. He went insane. Uh, I can't press... What? My controller freak out. Uh, the heck? Um, uh, okay. Well, this controller, I think, is out. Okay, woo! The light was blinking for some reason. You fraud, keep your mockery. Please, don't misunderstand. It really is exactly as you've both said. What are you trying to say? I've occupied the darker recesses of London's underworld and now, how do you put it, done nothing? I confess it's a little embarrassing to have pointed it out quite so starkly, but yes. I really have done nothing. Which means... I can be indicted for nothing. No. What? Getting some heavy vibes from the electricity, dude. Remember him? Yes. Yes. See, the, the, the big guy. I'm telling you. That's why I thought Nail Strongheart was the baddie the whole time because he gave off the same vibes. Are you trying to hypnotize us? No, I'm sorry. 
my controller was freaking out and I couldn't um press any buttons, but then I reset it. It's true. Personally, I've committed no crime. I've merely been surrounded by fools who've acted very rashly indeed. You can't get away with that. You've consistently preyed on people's weaknesses. And what? Threatened them? Are you sure it wasn't just bargaining? I would like to address that all the good lords, ladies and gentlemen of the judiciary here present. You all know of these darker recesses in our great capital, and deep down, I believe you also know that to fight those who dwell there requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves. So let me appeal to your good sense now. Consider the situation with me. If this catalogue of horrifying revelations were to become common knowledge among the six million inhabitants of London, what might happen? To learn that the infamous murderer of royals and nobles was a respected member of the aristocracy himself, that evidence was fabricated in the scapegoat's trial amid secret negotiations with prosecutors to effect a jailbreak, that the Reaper of the Bailey had was an organized group of assassins managed by a Scotland Yard inspector, and finally, that it was all amassed minded by the Lord Chief Justice himself. If the general public of Britain knew the truth, all faith in the police and the prosecutor's office would be completely lost without doubt. But would it? <laughs> public order in the capital would be com completely break down. We'd be cast back to the lawless days of the last century. Precisely, as it was a hundred years ago when one in ten of the population were criminals. Think what we've accomplished since then. A public policing force, a comprehensive set of laws. And if we want to continue to protect this new era of law and order, I say again, we must at times occupy the darkness ourselves. But you kill people, so no. We've successfully identified and apprehended the man responsible for taking Inspector Gregson's life. That is all that was expected at this trial. All these other matters have, that have been discussed will be eliminated from the minutes of these proceedings in the interests of preserving law and order. And to protect Her Majesty the Queen, of course. Well, my lords and ladies, gentlemen, what say you? No. He has a point? No, he doesn't. The things Lord Strongheart has done are quite unforgivable. Yeah. But on the other hand... No. Isn't there a duty to maintain law and order in the capital? You start with him! You can't deny that the threat of the Reaper over the years has done wonders for the crime rate. And by fair means or foul, that's all thanks to Lord Strongheart. No! Oh my gosh. I hate these people. Uh, they will put others in charge of it. Exactly. Are you hearing this? This is the will of the British judiciary. Pathetic fools. For your rousing response, friends, I express my heartfelt gratitude. Therefore, in accordance with the overwhelming wishes of the court, the record shall be erased. You have to respect the man's ability to turn the situation to his favor. Lord Strongheart really is a mastermind, master of manipulation. You've conclusively, you've conclusively proven his guilt, yet still he manages to evade justice. I just don't know what we can do. Yunosuke. It looks like the trial really is going to come to an end now. I'm almost out of options, I think. There's really only one path open left to me. Uh, all these lords would... Be targets if they got in his way exactly but they're just like it won't happen to me it will happen to you dude um yes as i only know as i know only too well the only thing that carries any weight in this court is hard evidence but, Mr. Naruhodo, what evidence is there to use at this stage in the trial? I have an idea. I don't know whether anything will come of it, but... I didn't press Y. Okay. If there's any time for using this particular item, we have among the evidences now. The only thing that comes to mind is the rabbit. Because Sholmes cryptically said, yo, remember, do this. Oops. <laughs> Oh my! Yes, Mr. Sholmes asked if you had that with you at earlier. You've exposed all of Lord Strongheart's wrongdoing now. 
I have no doubt that Mr. Sholmes had already deduced exactly how the truth would unfurl. So I think it must be time for the great detective to take center stage, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Let's take the hair by the ears then, and heave. All right, here goes. Heave. Ow, 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 ow. My dear fellows, must I remind you every time? A gentle tug will suffice. Mr. Sholmes, you're looking in quite the wrong direction, Mr. Nadhodo. Because I'm over here. Ah, Mr. Nadhodo, he's... Eh? It's Mr. Sholmes. What? He's a hologram? How is this possible? I was expecting you back, Sholmes. Delighted to be here again, Lord Strongheart. What? What is the meaning of this? Bailiff, seize him! Put that man in irons! This is... this is a closed court. You've been warned once already, man. What the? I can't get hold of him, my lord. We... we just go right through him. I'm afraid your efforts are wasted. You see... The great detective you see before you is composed entirely of light and shadow. An image, if you will. Mr. Nadhuru, I must congratulate you on your fine deductions. Mr. Sholmes, what on earth is... Are you familiar, I wonder, with the invention known as the telephone? Um, well, yes. I hear that some public telephones have been installed recently in Tokyo. The sound of the speaker's voice is converted to an electrical signal and transmitted instantly to another place. Right. Sounds are transmitted. So could not images keep them company, I mused. Iris and I did some modest experimentation to develop such a device specifically for this very day. Modest experimentation, Mr. Sholmes? What a modest description. And somewhat incidentally, I thought we might just as well transmit an entire scene. Somewhat incidentally, Mr. Sholmes? Now you're just being immodest. Do you mean to say you're not actually here, Sholmes? Ah, I knew my trusty partner would have no trouble grasping the concepts. Except he's grasping at the stand to steady himself after your shock arrival. Poor father, I would have hoped he might have been forewarned being the great detective's great partner. Leave my courtroom at once! Get out, or I swear to you! Dear me, you on the other hand, Lord Strongheart, appear to have a very poor grasp of the situation. Allow me to reiterate, I am not here, which would, I hope, lead naturally to one asking. Where exactly are you? The very question I was awaiting! I am at present enjoying the air in a rather splendid garden. Teleporter doesn't work, but they have this. I know, so weird. Yo! Nano Gel! Long time no see! I hope you've done well, dude! Happy Thursday! I'm finally finishing Great Ace Attorney! A garden? Not just any garden, you understand. A garden at Buckingham Palace. What? You copy! Buckingham Palace! What's Buckingham Palace, Mr. Sato? I've never heard of it. Do you ever read the news, Mr. Narahodo? Um, Mr. Sholmes? Is Iris with you there? Ah, well now. Iris is currently enjoying some tea. With Her Majesty. Her... Her Majesty? Not just any Her Majesty, you understand. Her Majesty, the Queen of the British Empire. What? What? Finally, what's the next game? Next game is uh, AI Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. What on earth is all this about? Buckingham Palace is Her Majesty the Queen's residence in London, Mr. Naruhodo. Order in the court! I demand immediate silence! Her Majesty the Queen, you can't be me. No. This, this is some sort of unforgivably distasteful trickery by a third-rate detective, that's all. Unforgivably distasteful trickery. What an apt description. A closed court session attended by elite members of the judiciary is a rare event. I presumed that Her Majesty would be more than a little curious about the proceedings. So I decided to show her everything from start to finish. Huh? You showed her? Indeed. I didn't the Herlock Shorb's remote cinematograph. Cinematograph. I finally found a new game that keeps me motivated to keep playing and feels like Dragon Guard 3 other than Genshin. It's called Sword and Fairy. Just came out yesterday. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look that up. Sword and Fairy. Uh, I don't have a pen. Pen. Oh, I hope I remember it later. You meddling. This is some kind of nightmare. Just as I appear to be standing before you, regaling you with talk of my latest invention, no doubt you've inferred that the reverse is also true. You... you don't mean... 
Her Majesty has seen and heard every moment of the proceedings. I assumed there would be no objection, after all. Every trial in this country is conducted under the auspices of Her Majesty, as you know. You. You. I confess I am quite impatient to hear Her Majesty's opinion. About the unforgivably distasteful trickery in which you've been engaged over the past ten years. No, I was merely... Oh, so sorry to keep you all waiting. Vicky and I have so much to talk about. Iris, there you are. In fact, I've lit a message here from Her Majesty. A message? Well then, if everyone is sitting comfortably... <clears throat> Last epic too, but I'm always on and off that game. Never heard of that either. Man, I'm gonna have to look these up. Uh, forthwith and with immediate effect, all authority previously afforded to male stronghearts is hereby revoked forevermore. Ah. Furthermore, he will be prosecuted for crimes against his country in a public trial by jury in the coming days. So, it seems that Her Majesty doesn't believe we need to fight fire with fire. Justice in this country needn't be administered from the shadows at all. Male Strongheart. The darkness you fostered to conceal your despicable actions these last ten years is a thing of the past now. After today, your brand of law and order has no future, because no longer are you the Ch Lord Chief Justice. In the eyes of the law and of Her Majesty the Queen, you are nothing but a criminal. When is P4G coming to PlayStation? Isn't it? Adjourned. 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 Court has adjourned. I thought he was just gonna fall on the fire. Is he going to get impaled by? <gasps> Oh, I thought that was gonna, like, stab him in the- Ah! Okay, now everyone's on fire. Uh, uh, everyone's on fire. I've been playing Monster Hunter Stories too. It was a mistake. It was supposed to be Mo Monster Hunter Rise, but I'm enjoying it. Along with P3. P3 or Persona 3 FES or Persona 3 Portable that's coming to the PlayStation. Because I've been thinking of going back to play Persona 3 Portable, Akihiko only run. Like just um, main, main character girl and Akihiko. Finally he's dead. Stradley he's not. Next month will be Star Ocean and the month after that is Valkyrie. Enough time until Crisis Core Reunion. Which Star Ocean? All the Star Oceans? Man, I still have to play like 4 and 5. Lord Clint Van Zeeks left a will in which he confessed to everything. When those words came out of Asugi's mouth, it deranged me completely. I knew I must do anything and everything in my power to contain the situation. But I couldn't find that damn document. I searched his cell, but it wasn't there. Which precipitated the jailbreak plot, I presume. What do you mean? The need to obtain that will was all-consuming. I was sure that if I facilitated Asuki's escape, he would emerge with the will somewhere on his person. But despite searching his limp body in the cemetery that night, it still eluded me. It never even crossed my mind that it was concealed in the sword's hilt. The new Star Ocean? Ah, uh, okay. P3 from the PSP version? So that is Persona 3 Portable! Heck yeah! I think a lot of these lords in here also might be feeling the heat. Yeah. Everyone got burned and died. What pains me now is that my brother left this world without a word to me. I'm sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. In point of fact, I think perhaps that isn't the case. Sorry? How can that be? There is more to his last will and testament. What? As I confront the prospect of my demise, I feel bitter regret for my younger brother. Farrakh, you have always looked up to me, and now you follow in my footsteps to become a prosecutor. 
It is my fervent wish that my unspeakable deed should not hinder your advancement. I ask not for understanding, for none could understand my depravity. I only ask for forgiveness. Asuki is a fine detective and a hunter worthy of respect. He has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that this document survives. The second, I, I cannot commit to paper. I've confessed my sins to my wife. May she find resolution in my death. With my eternal gratitude to my Japanese friend, I rest my quill. Clint Van Zeeks. What was the second one? Clint. I would like to play more Star Ocean games. Are there any on Switch? No. Uh, I think they're all on uh, PlayStation. Is that a spirit in the back? How is the dead take cases? It's a hologram of Herlock Sholmes. Male Strongheart. You colluded with Seishiro Jigoku in a criminal plot so immense it spanned the oceans. And you cold-heartedly murdered all those who knew the truth about what happened 10 years ago. But why did you set about that now, a whole decade later? to ascend to the very peak. These last 10 years made me realize being the Lord Chief Justice wasn't enough, short of becoming Her Majesty's Attorney General. I could have no real power to affect the changes needed in this country. And for that promotion, I needed to ensure no remnants of the past remained. How could you? I like everything to run smoothly in the exact manner that I prescribed, like a well-oiled machine. And I was just a step away. And for your ambition to succeed. Did you even bother to count the number of brilliant people you had killed? Ah, Mr. Reaper, are you not forgetting something? Such as? You very much adopted your usual prosecutor-like demeanor in the proceedings now. But the reality of the situation is that you are the defendant in this trial. Ah. However, the presiding judge would appear to have fallen from the bench, as it were. May I suggest, therefore, we entrust the final adjudication to an old friend? I thought this whole place burned. My lord. You haven't played a Rise yet, did you? No, I have not. I'm still waiting for a PS5. I'm waiting for a PS5 Pro or whatever before I play a Rise. Light of Hope is all I've played. Oh, that's how I do. It's Light of Hope. As a member of the judiciary, I've been all following the proceedings from the gallery. And I must say, I shan't ever forget the extraordinary battle between good and evil that I witnessed here today. The darkness that had blighted out justice in our lands these past ten years has, has, has at last been dispelled. Thanks in no small part to the efforts of a bright young star from the east. Defense Counsel Naruhodo. Yes, my lord. On behalf of everyone here present at the old Bailey, I give you my heartfelt thanks. You're too kind, my lord. The first time I faced you in court, just under a year ago now. I had the faintest of imita intimations that if British justice, so warped and twisted over its long history, was finally to no change. This might just be the man to do it. What? But at the time, I wouldn't allow myself to acknowledge the possibility. I couldn't overcome my hatred of the Japanese after the circumstances of my brother's death. Mr. Nadohoro. Allow me to apologize for countless discourtesies on my part. You are a lawyer of boundless talents. Oh, Lord Van Zeeks. When I first arrived in Great Britain, I was literally a nobody, certainly not a lawyer. The truth is, my fortunes have entirely been made by the miraculous people I fed. My best friend, Kazuma Asogi, who led me here to Britain in the first place. My loyal and ever-patient judicial assistant, Mr. Sato, who helped me study to become a lawyer. The brilliant Lord Van Zeeks, who never failed to challenge his Nipponese rival. And not to mention, the exceptional master of logic and reasoning who showed me the true art of deduction, Mr. Sholmes. Saving the best for last, Mr. Narahodo. What a relief. I'm well aware that without all these people's help and support, I wouldn't be where I am today. The truth is a guiding light that always leads to happiness. Not always to happiness. 
Uh, wait. Oh shoot, I missed a lot of uh, chat. Um, still haven't gotten a rise yet. I also want a PS5. <laughs> Danga and Mamba is next. No, Nirvana Initiative. PS5 Pro gonna be worse to find than the basic watch. I know, I know, but <laughs> that's the version I want. I live by that principle for a long time now, but actually it's not true. The truth can also cause great pain, sometimes even leave people on the brink of despair. And for that reason, there are those who feel the need to hide the truth, who do it instinctively even. But as soon as we allow our eyes to settle on something other than the truth, the darkness takes hold. And from there it grows until eventually it makes us blind to the guiding light of the truth altogether. Blah 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 blah, let's end this. <laughs> so that's why it's my belief that we must all resolve to never avert our eyes from what is just and true. That we can continue to walk the straight and narrow path ahead. End it. Just let's see if our art stream whenever. Good night, Kirby. Thanks for joining. Have a good weekend. Well, I must excuse myself now. But before I go, Mr. Narahodo, let me compliment you on your grand opus. What? Without your beautifully composed case against Lord Strongheart, Her Majesty would have been unable to act. Thanks to you and your fellows, the haunting undertones corrupting Britain's justice system have been silenced. Um, thank you very much. So, until our paths cross again somewhere. Screw you, Kazuma. No, no screw Kazuma. Posture check, hugs, posture check. Thanks, Kirby, for the hugs. You locked an achievement. It took you a while to beat it, but you got there. Ugh. I'm almost done! Well then. But there's gonna be like an hour of ending dialogue now. It would appear that this long trial has finally come to an end. My apologies for any anxiety caused, my lord. I'm quite sure we shall meet again here in the courtroom before long, Prosecutor Bar Barak Van Zeeks. In conclusion to these proceedings, I hereby declare the defendant Barak Van Zeeks. Not a guilty. Woo 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 woo. Yeah yeah. Wee. Night, Smooth. Thanks for joining. Have a good weekend. That is all. Court is adjourned. It really is all over. But did I sacrifice too much? Mr. Naruhodo. I really must congratulate you. It was a truly, truly splendid performance. Honestly, I couldn't be happier for you. Oh, thank you very much. But I really couldn't have done it without you at my side through it all, Mrs. Zato. Oh. Your kind words mean so much to me. It really was a very splendid show, that, Naruhodo. I'd have thought you'd be smiling from ear to ear, but you look rather glum. Well, of course I'm delighted about the verdicts. But in exposing the truth, I'm afraid I've caused my client a great deal of pain. I'm really not sure that's what a lawyer ought to be doing. Oh, well, in that case... I'm quite sure that when you see Lord Van Zeke's smiling face, everything will seem much better. <laughs> oh, I was thinking at Kirby, sorry. Okay, thanks for sticking around, Smooth. Um, Mrs. Sato, everything seems worse. He has a face like thunder. And lightning! Oh dear, I really shouldn't have presumed. Mr. Naruhodo. Uh, uh, yes? Almost a year it's been now since I first encountered you here in this very courthouse. For you to have risen to the level of excellence you demonstrated today. Well, it's quite remarkable. But, but I exposed the most unpalatable truth, unpalatable truth you could ever have imagined in court today. I feel as though I've robbed you of something you held so dear. What was it he said? To fight those who dwell in the darkness requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves. But that, that was just a feeble excuse of a coward. Only those with a steadfast eye for the truth have what it takes to fight the dark forces of crime. You've made fine work of establishing that fact in court today. Oh. Well, thank you. 
What magnanimous words. I'm quite sure that Kazuma-sama would have a smile on his face at this very moment if he were here. Kazuma. He is here! <laughs> um, Mr. Sato, there's another face like Thunder here. Oh my, and he really was here. Lord Van Zeeks. Allow me to congratulate you on your acquittal. Congratulate me, or curse me. You failed to bring down the Reaper. I owe you an apology. No, it is I who should apologize. Your father, Genshin. If I had been stronger, then perhaps... I made an unforgivable error of judgment. I can offer no excuse. And I can offer no forgiveness. That said... I suppose you fought for justice and the truth. For that, at least, I can't withhold respect. Your words mean more to me than you can know. I would hold them dear. Asuma-sama. I must say, there's one thing that's still bothering me. What's that? The will that Lord Clint Van Zeeks wrote before his duel with my father. Asagi's fine detective of Hunter will be respect. He has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that the document is The second, I cannot commit to paper. I confess my sins to my wife. May she find resolution of my death with my eternal grandmother, Clint Van Zeeks. What can the second of his final wishes have been? That your father agreed to honor you, mean. Hmm. I think perhaps. I might be able to shed some light on that. What? Father? It was ten years ago, as you know, the day before, before the execution was scheduled. I went to the prison to say my farewells to Genshin. Why aren't you putting up more of a fight, Genshin? If you'd only agree to it, Seishiro and I would gladly petition the government. We've been through this already. You don't need to worry about me. Anyway, Eugene, I have a favor to ask of you. Something of great importance. You're one of my greatest friends, Genshin. Whatever it is, consider it done. I'm going to tell you an address. I need you to go there at once in secret and telling no one. You should find a lady of the gentry hiding in there. Lady of the gentry? She's not in a good way, and she's with child. The birth is imminent. As a medical man, I'd like you to attend to her. Please, you're her only hope. By any chance, is the child yours, Genshin? Don't be daft. It's a favor that was asked of me by a man I knew, as his dying wish. My goodness. I swore to demand that I would help. That I would do whatever I could for his wife and his unborn child. But if something should happen to me, I need to ask that favor. To ask you that same favor. You're the only person I know that I can truly rely on. What did you say? If something should happen to you, tomorrow night you're going to be. to be. <laughs> you never know though, do you? What life will bring. Alright then, tell me the address. I'll head there at once with Seishiro and. No, not with him. Pardon? This is the favor I'm asking of you, and only you, Eugene. Right, I see. Very well then. Now with strong heart out of the way, Kazuma can take over and bring his reign of terror. No, Kazuma's a good boy. That very night, I caught a train from Paddington to Dartmoor in Devon. I found the old house. In the middle of nowhere it was, an old hunting hound lay asleep in the grounds. poor woman was on the floor at the back of a darkened room. She was in mortal danger. I broke her waters to precipitate the labor before she weakened further, but it was a torturous birth. I did everything humanly possible for her and her child. And in the end, I was lucky enough to welcome a new life into the world. But tragically... My efforts to save the mother's life were in vain. I held the healthy newborn girl in my arms and wept for longer than I care to remember. Eventually, in something of a daze, I looked around the room. There was precious little in it, but an old travel trunk caught my eye. It had clearly been well looked after over the years, made of top quality leather with fine stitching. But it was when I saw the emblem on the side of it that everything dropped into place. B for Baskerville. Baskerville? You mean the woman was the wife of Lord Clint Van Zeeks? 
That's right. The newborn was his daughter. But that makes no sense. Why on earth wouldn't Clint have entrusted the child to my care in that thick case? I was completely unaware that he even had a daughter. I suppose he didn't really have any choice. What? Well, your brother said that he confessed everything to his wife. So she must have been beside herself with worry for her child. If the true identity of the professor were ever to be made public, the girl would be forever branded as the daughter of the infamous mass murderer. Ah. So the only solution was to distance the young girl from the Van Zeeks family as much as possible. I don't believe it. I imagine that in his final hour, Lord Clint Van Zeeks made the obvious choice. He would have thought to himself, this Japanese man here is someone I can trust. I honored my promise to Genshin, of course. However, only a month later, I was summoned back to Japan. And without disclosing the par par parentage? parentage of the child, I couldn't obtain permission to take her with me. Oh, how awful. I was completely at a loss. In the end, I had to ask my great friend. I asked him if... Iris is Barrick's niece. Oh. Clint Van Zeke's daughter is Iris. I asked him if he would be a father to her. That being Mr. Sholmes, I presume. Yes. He took one look into my eyes and agreed to it on the spot. Mr. Sholmes, he has a heart of gold. Really, all it can be said that I did for the child was to give her a name. Oh? When I come to Britain, I was trying to escape from the grief of losing my darling wife. So it was her name I gave to the little girl. The wife's name, Professor Mikotoba. In other words... The name of my mother. I am a Mikotoba. Oh! That's right. I am a... Or in English, Iris. Iris. I had no idea! Ouch! Mr. Narohoro, what's wrong? The thing in... The little thing just pinched me on the... Behind through my trouser pocket. Hard! Ah, oh, my dear fellows, can you hear me? Mr. Sholmes, is that you? Ouch! Yes, yes, we can hear you. You see what excessive tugging can do? Let that be a lesson to you. Mr. Sholmes, we weren't able to thank you properly before, but you were simply marvelous. Your checkmate move was a stroke of genius. Indeed it was, wasn't it? I surpassed myself, I feel. It became apparent to me that to stop the Lord Chief just injustice would require such measures. Rene, Cece! Oh, Iris. Oh, I'm so pleased. What a wonderful outcome. Her Majesty Queen Vicky said she thought my special blend was delicious. Oh, uh, I'm sure she did. After all, no one brews a more delicious tea than you do, Iris. Let's have a party to celebrate. Mr. Reaper, you simply must come too. Well, um... I'm... I'm afraid I couldn't... The Reaper of the Bailey flushed by a ten-year-old girl again. No, really? Oh, poo. She's your niece. But I give you my word. That I shall present myself at your residence in the near future to express my gratitude. Oh, well, how lovely. Promise now, I won't let you forget. Bye for now, then. All right, Iris. Thank you for all your help earlier. Oh, that was nothing. Just come back home soon. Ouch! Uh, one final pinch goodbye, was it? Well, I think I ought to be leaving. Where are you going? Lord Van Zeeks, would you care to accompany me? Certainly. Where are you going? Mr. Naruhodo, allow me to once again express my deep gratitude to you. I believe you saved my life. Wait, Lord Van Zeeks. No, wait, Kazuma, where are you going? Yes. Um, what are you intending to do now? Well, clearly, I shall have to resign from the prosecutor's office. Oh no! Why? I intend to publicize the full truth about the professor case. Once that's done, the Van Zeeks family will be ostracized completely from London society. Surely not. 
So as soon as I am free from my employment, I shall leave the capital. Oh, I see. Don't be a fool. Are those the actions of a man who once feared as the mighty reaper of the Bailey? I beg your pardon. For the past ten years, you've endured that pseudonym and been cast as one of the dark forces yourself. Now that you've finally been freed from that disrepute, your battle is just beginning, surely. Well, I certainly never expected to hear those words from your lips. I waited a very long time to come to London. Now I'm properly here, I intend to learn all that I can. Anyway, goodbye for now, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Why? Why are you leaving me? Asuma Asugi. It seems as though he's really matured suddenly. He's not the only one who's matured, Mr. Naruhodo. Hmm? Well, I think we should make our way back to Baker Street. Must help Iris with tonight's dinner. We must. Ugh. It was then. And I came to an important decision about my future. I'm gonna marry Kazuma. <laughs> I'm home! Ah! About time you got you. We've been waiting ages, Odo. What are you doing with that colorful piece of history? It's a party, isn't it? Uh. It's gotta go off of the bang. I mean, fireworks, ideally. But when you ain't got fire, smoke's the next best thing, ain't it? There's a girl on Fresno Street who could help you with that, I think. Right. I'll remember that. You don't have to reload that thing every time I speak. You really must hear this. It's quite the most extraordinary thing. I assure you, it will defy your expectations. Take down every detail now, Mikotoba. Ah, the world-famous great detective regaling his partner with the tale of his adventure. A sight to behold. Would you care to hazard a guess? Where do you suppose the fiendish runaway has concealed himself? Would you believe? Inside the trunk I found abandoned in his cabin. I would believe it, yes. I say, Mikotoba, I detect not a hint of surprise. I wonder what it is, hmm? Maybe because I was there at the scene as well, Holmes. What? You were? Then why the deuce didn't you say so before? Not quite the sight I was expecting to behold, but still. It's hard not to feel privileged to see it. Hello, Mr. Sholmes, Professor Mikotoba. I'm finally back from the Bailey. And not a moment too soon. A feast prepared by Iris and Miss Susato awaits. I must say, I haven't seen Susato looking so happy in a long time. Ah, Reno, there you are. Dinner's on the table, everyone. Please do come and take a seat. Time to fill me boots. Ask him how much a bottle of wine is that he keeps breaking. <laughs> Goodness, is that really true, Chino? Yep, I'm losing me copper's clobber and going back to what I know best. It's a diver's life for me. You're really leaving the police force? But why, Ginny? Well, the boss ain't around no more, so... No. And anyway, no matter how hard I try, that Reaper ain't ever gonna accept a diver turned dick, is he? Uh, I don't know what- I didn't- mm, I don't use profanity, but that's the term they use, so... Oh, diver turned detective. Okay, okay, okay. Well, people can change, you know. Ah, oh, yes, that reminds me. I rather thoughtfully offer to relieve the bailiff of this now defunct piece of evidence. Eh? It's the inspector's pocket watch, and the crown has been reattached. That watch was his pride and joy, a symbol of his great achievements at Scotland Yard. For ten years without fail, it measured every second of the man's remarkable career. But now, it's stopped. Someone needs to keep the memory of Inspector Gregson's career alive by taking on the great responsibility of winding that watch every single day again. Yes, someone with an equally fierce detective spirit. It's gotta be me. There ain't no one else. Quite right. I mean, after all, the boss was... Well, he was my boss. Yes, Ginny, he was. Oh yeah, and I made you a promise on all, didn't I, Iris? That I'd become a proper detective one day and track down your old man. 
Oh! All right, then it's decided. I'll do it, and I swear. I'll find your dad and bring him back kicking and screaming. Ooh. Ooh. I'm not entirely sure that would be appropriate. Yes, I think, Gina, it might be best to... I think I'd like you to forget that promise, Ginny. Wait, did she find out? Did she hear? <gasps> eh? Iris? Well, obviously, I've always wondered who my real daddy is. Of course I have. I wanted to know where I've come from. Or it might tell me something about myself. But I've caused so much, such a lot of trouble trying to find out. For so many people. No, you haven't. Really? Bruno? Professor Mickey? Oh, no, not at all, my dear. Really, you owe no apology to anyone. Well, anyway, I've decided to give up on it. Because I finally realized. My daddy is the greatest in the world. Oh, oh my heart. I don't think it matters what his name is or where he's from. Don't you agree? Early. <gasps> With every word, I re wow, I'm tearing up. Wow. Thank you, Hurley. Thank you, Daddy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, why am I tearing up? <laughs> ah! I think Mikotoba. Yes, Sholmes. I think that I ought to express my gratitude to you. Oh? For six years, you and I solved many a mystery together. And during that time, I remember countless expressions of gratitude for our services. But a moment ago, I heard the most pleasing expression of gratitude of them all. I should never have experienced it. But not for you, you old softy shoves. I must confess, it's a weight off my mind to hear you say it. Well then, I think this calls for a lengthy violin recital, wouldn't you say? Oh, well, the food would go cold, that's the only problem. Maybe next week, Curly? Ugh. Uh, I think she knows. Right? I think, I think she heard and she's just like, oh. Oh, so I'm just like, oh man, are you saying your actual, like, Clint was a great dude because, you know, he he confessed to his crimes or, or like, Holmes, Holmes is a great dad too. Either way, oh, I don't know why that got me. Are you sure a week is long enough, Iris? Ah ha 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 ha. Oh my gosh. Even amidst the most troubling of cases, even reeling from the most shocking of revelations, returning in the evening to this suite of rooms, there's always warmth and happiness to be had. The home of the world's greatest detective, and my home too, with my greatest family. Here it is. I don't... <laughs> Ah, uh, like seriously, as I get older, things about par like parent-child relationship stuff, it hits my heart more. Oh, it's just oh. the attic. This attic room has been my home and office for almost a year now. I've certainly had some unforgettable experiences whilst I lived here, but I think now the time has come. Time to bid this place farewell. Naruhodo. Oh, Professor. Are you alone? I didn't hear any sound from Susato's room. Yes, Susato-san went out after dinner. She took a carriage. Something about an important matter she needed to take care of. Ah, I see. I wanted to thank you for what you did earlier. Well, with Iris, I mean. When the subject of her father came up. Lord Clint Van Zeeks. I made up my mind many years ago to never tell her who her real father was. It's what was agreed with Genshin, after all. Lord Clint Van Zeke's final wishes before he died, you mean? Yes, I've had to take some rather drastic steps at times to protect that secret, you know. Calling Susato back to Japan six months ago, for example. That's why? When I read Sosaki-san's report about his final days in London, my heart nearly stopped. You'd stumble across the crux of that terrible case, the dog's collar. Oh yeah, it was hidden in the wall of that apartment. The description of the Baskerville insignia left me in no doubt. Baskerville. 
If you decided to investigate that insignia, sooner or later you'd have made a connection to the Van Zeeks. And to make matters worse, Susato knew of the unpublished story as well. The story that Iris had written based on my notes from the time. Ah, yes, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Exactly. It was a work of fiction, but based on the grim reality of a huge beast of a dog being used as a murder weapon. A dog with the Baskerville family emblem around its neck. Armed with those two clues, I feared you and Suzato might arrive at the truth. So I invented that story about having collapsed to justify her leaving London and returning to Japan at once. All in the aid of halting any investigations you and she might have been contemplating. I see. Something I never understood. is why Suzato-san came across that manuscript in Japan, though. You know, Iris's The Hound of Baskerville story, I mean. Jolm sent it to me. That was before Susato left Japan. He was very troubled about what should be done about it, you see. I'd read it and carelessly left it on my desk, which is where Susato came across it, of course. Ah. It was the only case Jolm's and I ever pursued that I didn't record in meticulous detail. I was stunned when I discovered that young Iris had pieced together so much of it from my paltry notes. Jolm's and I discussed the matter and decided that we couldn't allow the story's publication. At that point, I returned the manuscript by post to Jolm's for safekeeping. So you did all that to stop Iris from finding out the truth about her father. That's right, because Sholmes had told me how astute she'd become. However, having witnessed events in court today, I must say my opinion was somewhat shifted. Oh? Well, I think at some point in the future, the time will come for Iris to know the truth. And when it does, well, I believe it will be for the best. I think so too. Actually, Professor... I wanted to talk to you about something, too. Judging from that expression, I'd say you've come to a decision, have you? Yes, I have. I will be returning with you to Japan. Are you quite sure? I'm really the only here as a substitute for Kazuma. But he's here in Britain now, as originally intended. Locum student Naruhodo doesn't really have a right to stay, I think. I see. Looking back now, when I first arrived here in February... My becoming a lawyer just seemed to be the way things turned out. With Kazuma, Susato-san, and Mr. Sholmes all gently pushing me in that direction. This means Iris has been writing stories about her life without knowing it about it. At least the Hound of the Baskervilles ones, yeah. Oof. I spent the best part of a year immersed in this world, but always aware of a seed of doubt inside me. Until today. Standing in that courtroom earlier, all doubts vanished from my mind. I was totally focused. I was sure of my belief in my client, and was, I was sure I could see the trial through. And at the end of it, I finally realized, no one else chose this path for me. I chose it myself. Path of a defense lawyer, eh? Yes, that's what I am now. That's what I'll be going back with you to Japan as. And that's the path I'll be following for the rest of my life. Well, it sounds like you've made quite a resolution there. I have. Very well then. I must say it's extremely welcome news. I shall make arrangements for your return first thing tomorrow, but I don't imagine we'll depart for a few days. Not with the symposium having been cancelled now. Such a shame. Never mind. I'm sure there'll be other opportunities in the future. Well then, I'll bid you good night. She heard! Susato-san! Just wanted to let you know I'm back. Did you, um, hear what your father and I were discussing? Sorry, I did, yes. Couldn't help, but... Oh, how much did you hear? Well... From the part about Iris's real father, I think. In other words, from the beginning. <laughs> so you've made up your mind. To return to Japan and continue working as a defense lawyer. 
Ah, yes. Sorry, I really should have consulted you about it. I did want to earlier this evening, actually, but you'd already gone out. Oh no, that's quite alright. I already knew that it's what you decide, Naruhoro-san. You did? Um, Susato-san. Ah, yes? I suppose this means it has to be farewell soon. I suppose. You'll be a great help to Kazuma going forward. I mean, I know he's a brilliant lawyer, but he's new to the British courtroom. He'll certainly benefit greatly having a brilliant judicial assistant at his side. I'll do my very best. I wish I could say it, but I just can't. I can't ask her to come with me, after all. She was always supposed to be coming to Britain as Kazuma's assistant. It's growing late. We should both try to get some sleep. I'm sure you must be exhausted after today. Oh, yes, you're right. Before I retire, let me just say one more time. You really were quite splendid in court today. So if you ask me, anyone who thinks of you as a substitute or locum should be ashamed of themselves. Those purposely got facts got wrong just to get you to solve it, just to relive old times with the Japanese. Oh, Shom- yeah, Shom's was just like, haha, this sounds like a, a case I did long ago. Let's relive it. Susato-san. Thank you. Oh no. Does- do I like her? Does she like me? Are they Phoenix Wright's ancestors? Great grandparents? I can't believe this day's finally come. Really leaving then, Runo? I'm afraid so, Iris. Thank you so much for everything. I don't know what I'll do without your wonderful cooking and delicious tea. Oh, I wish you weren't going. But, but you have to come back and visit. Say you will. Of course, I promise. Well, it was a very brief union, but it was a pleasure to pursue a case with you again after so long. For a while, at least, it felt like old times. Yes, I suppose on reflection. There's something to be said for it, having a little fun once in a while. Let's go and say goodbye to the professor as well, I think. Alright, Iris, you do that. Yeah, Sholmes, I knew what you meant. Honk! <laughs> Just check, Naruhoro-san, your luggage is already on board. Such a beautiful morning, perfect for embarking on our journey, isn't it? Before I set off, I'd just like to say how thankful I am for everything you've done for me. Give my warmest regards to Kazuma, please. Actually, I think you ought to give him your regards in person, don't you? Alright. Kazuma! What are you doing here? Ha 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 you really think I missed my best friend's departure? Why don't you come with me? Oh, but he wants to stay in Britain to learn more about British justice. Okay, okay. Thanks. Hey, Kazuma-san, what are you doing here? Oh, that's what I'll have to say that for another time. Personally, I'm looking forward to facing you in court again. Me too, but we're both defense lawyers, so... I'm going to become a prosecutor. I'll stay in Lord Vanzik's tutelage for the time being, but before long. I'll be 
and tend to be just as formidable as the Reaper himself. So he's probably Edgeworth's uh, ancestor. So, God. See, he's already got the, the cravat going. That's where Edgeworth gets it from. Favor to ask. What is it? Name it. I'd like you to take care of this for me for a while. I've seen it now. I've seen it now. The demon was inside me. The demon that reared its ugly head that day. Wait, what? It was only for the briefest of moments the last time I came face to face with that inspector. It was unmistakable. I wanted to kill him. I've always known that there are demons that live inside people, and now I know there is one in me. The fact that it very nearly consumed me is something I'll carry with me until the end of my days. While I devote my life to fighting those whose demons have got the better of them. As a prosecutor. That's what you resolved to do, is it? Until I'm ready to face the demon within me to slay it once and for all. You need to see your care. You'll take it. Ah, I got it. Of course I will. I'll keep it by my side, always. As a reminder of your love for me. Until we meet again, then. You have your path to follow and I have mine. Um, Naruhodo-san. The path you're going to follow from now on. I wonder if I might follow it at your side, unless I'd be a burden. What? I mean, I would very much like you to come with me. But aren't you? <laughs> You're so predictable, Junosuke. I am? Honestly, you never change at all, but that's what I like about you. You mean you knew about this? It was the evening after Lord Van Zeke's trial came to an end. He came to see me at the prosecutor's office. Really? When I had that conversation with Professor Mikotoba. They'd go with Rinosuke back to Japan. Yes. I know it's unfair of me to follow my own interests like this. Coming here especially to tell me you're a stickler for etiquette, aren't you? Well, what are his feelings? We've never discussed it, of course, and Naruhoro-san has made no su such suggestion. I worry that perhaps I'd be a burden to him. They like each other. Aww. 
He's just as much of a stickler for etiquette as you are. He'd never say anything before he was asked. But I feel happy knowing you were with him. Look out for him on my behalf, will you? Hi! Of course! What do you think, Naruhoto-san? With you by my side, no trial would seem too daunting. So if you're willing, I'd be honored if you'd come with me. Together we can take on the world. Okay, he didn't say that in Japanese, but whatever. I'm terribly incompetent, but if you'll have me, I'd be delighted. Oh no, not at all. If anyone's terribly incompetent, it's me. What's wrong? Your luggage is Sato-san. There's no time. The ship's going to set sail any minute now. It's all right. There's no need to worry. As it happens, my luggage is already on board too. It is. Your fine judicial assistant has everything in hand as always. I see. Ah. Hey, no, your ship's about to leave. Time to go then. Look after yourself, Junosuke. Kazuma, draw your sword. We'll fight a duel. I'll do the words. Cross the courtroom. Stay eagerly waiting. As a lawyer. I've been waiting here to say that. Parker! Oh, I wish I could use this for the thumbnail, but it'll be super spoilery. Oh! No! I've been trying not to be too spoilery with my thumbnails. Don't forget me then, Kazuma. That's what we could. You know, Skin? I should check. Sholmes, thank you so much. I'm very much indebted to you. Indeed, Mr. Narahodo, I believe you are. I'll never forget all you've done for me during my time in London. Quite. I should like to think you will remember your debt's gratitude. Especially when I visit you in your country. What? The truth is, although many are ignorant of the fact, the world is far smaller than most folk realize. Well, I'd be delighted if you came to Japan one day. Oh, yes, we'd welcome you with open arms, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I can't wait. In that case, let us conclude that this is to be merely a brief parting, my dear fellows. That brings us to the end of my adventures in Great Britain. Honk. 
A killer twist of fate brought me halfway around the world, so, uh, but that was just the start of my journey. Who knows where fate will lead me next? So I'm confident this won't be my last meeting with the friends I've made in London. When we're together again? No doubt the first words I'll hear will be... Objection! Oh, come, the game is foot. The ship with our friends from the east sails steadily towards the distant horizon. Sholmes' face was alight with joy. The times may change, but a steadfast friendship will remain true, Wilson. We have but to gently close our eyes, and we are with our companions once more. So I do just that. And when I do, I can hear his strong, familiar voice ring out. Objection! Until we meet again, Runo. I did it. I finished it. Oh. Oh my gosh. Is there a sword in Phoenix's attic? Now I want to know. Unless he gave Kadama back. I've been thoroughly inundated with inquiries about my remote cinematograph to this day. But I'm no purveyor of electrical goods, and one of the promised closed court secrecy. Anyway, I've decided an absence from London is in order, a sojourn in distant climes. The Empire of Japan, perhaps. I understand that wardrobe class incurs no charge whatever. <laughs> wardrobe class instead of first class? I gave a little note to Hurley the other day. I just said... Thank you for everything, Daddy. But it made Hurley cry. And I gave him some lotion I invented as well, to dye his hair red safely. But he said that might make him cry too, so he'd rather not use it. Not making me cry, Iris. Uh. In those days, when I was known as the Reaper, I felt your presence at my side. Once, unable to bear the burden of that grim pseudonym, I even retired from the courtroom. Despite everything, I still wear your prosecutor's badge with pride. But the darkness that once beset me is no more, as you too are no more. In the words of a young foreign friend of mine, I must stride forward, toward a brighter future. Uh. <laughs> Boss left a note for me, you know. And I can read every letter now. A to Z, the old lot. It's clear to load of stuff up. The boss was trying to protect me, see? That's exactly what me and Chief Inspector Toby here are gonna keep doing for Londoners. I only wish I could have said how grateful I was before he... You know... Uh, stop making me cry. The truth is, I'm not the upstander fellow you think I am. You might be a diver at heart, but it's a good heart. You might me I need to be true to myself. I've got one more job to take care of before it's tata -ta to London Town for the foreseeable. And then... I've got to complete your education in the art of detection a la Gregson, as they say. Ugh. It's so weird seeing my name on the screen. Ugh. That des dog descended from the hand of the Baskerville. Oh my gosh, what if he is? Here 
Excellency, this man is accused of illegal entry into the office of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Objection! Oblique overstatement overruled. The minister has been detained in Britain anyway. Who is this caddish counsel for the defense and women are forbidden to enter the courtroom? Oh really? My friend Susan is in the British courtroom all the time and doing a wonderful job. Perhaps I should have engaged the services of a regular legal team. <laughs> Why does he have a black eye? Mama, is it true about Japanese people? Are they experts at filleting corpses? Yes, they are. Fish corpses on the whole. I'd like to go... I'd like to hone my own filleting skills. You don't mind, do you, Mama? Yes, I do. I'm not a corpse yet, am I? No. And I'm glad. Why is she still in jail? We all know it was, it was, um, what's his face? Strongheart. Puppeteering everything. Get her out of jail. Here I am again in Great Britain on the invitation of my dear old university friend. He sent me a very nice letter saying he'd like to show me around that now everything was settled. But what have I done? I was so excited I picked this splendid hotel and now I can't afford to bill. Oh, Barak, come to my rescue again, please. I just wish I could vanish into thin air sometimes. By the way, who killed the female assassin? I forgot. Um... Yo, I forgot too. I just remember she died at the beach. When I went to make the waxwork impression of the killer in the cemetery, I realized what had happened. But even in the witness stand of the highest court in the land, I could never speak of it. The Lord Chief Justice and I had struck a bargain, you see. For a faithful reproduction of the visage, there is nothing we two spells would not do. Was it the reporter? Oh no, it was poison by someone. <laughs> Everyone calls me gossip. I sell jaunty little tidbits to passerby, you know. Hee <laughs> everyone calls me a pepino, and they sell at the spaghetti. It's more red than the my header. <laughs> everyone, they call me... No, no, I cannot do it. This is ridiculous. Oh, Daly, how charming. You've made lots of new friends here, I see. Yes, and when we're released, we're all going to strike it rich together. It was the reporter dude. He slipped her some poison. He tried to frame it on Ray. I have to look at past videos. When I was accepted on the foreign study tour, I knew exactly what path I had to take. And however it might have ended, I knew that I wanted you there to see it. If I'd ended up in the dock, there's no one I would have rather had defending me. But now, thanks to you, there's a new path I want to take. I'm sure we'll meet again in the courtroom, my friends. Until then, I leave Karuma in your care. Made some tea in Naruhoro san. It's important that you rest whilst you can. Once we arrive in Japan, you shall be busy establishing your new office. I'm so delighted to be accompanying you. After all, your talents have been recognized by a great detective. Because you really are the greatest of lawyers. A great ace attorney, some might say. She said the name of the title!
He filled in both eyes of the Daruma. There's Wakahai. I wish I could use this as a thumbnail. Oh. Uh... Oh my gosh, there's more? Okay, well, I don't think these are like cutscenes, so... Oh man, so... It's over, Great Ace Attorney is over. I think these two games were brilliant. The... The whole, like we said earlier, how like past cases in the first game still relate to the second game. Characters come back and you're just like, whoa, this, this is like taking place over a whole year. And like, um, the art is beautiful, the music was fantastic. I'm so glad it finally got localized and came to the US. I still- I have like, before news of the localization came out, I bought Japanese copies of the 3DS version. And I modded my- one of my 3DSs to be able to play this. So we can play the regular Japanese game, and then I was like, okay, now I gotta wait for this fan subbing group to like, to um finish translating everything so I can play it, but then they're like, oh, hey, this is coming out, so it's- and they only- I think they only had like two cases left to translate, but then it's just like, well, this is coming out, so... whatever. But man... This was... fun. This was great. They didn't have as many, like, wacky, like, freaking out poses like they do in Ace Attorney. But I kind of get it because they wanted to keep it, like, realistic. In terms of, like... <laughs> models and art style. Whereas Phoenix Wright, you get, like, really wacky... facial expressions and poses and whatnot. Yeah, and not all witnesses were, like, um, super important to the case. But, yeah. I'm so glad that the last, um... The last case wasn't as convoluted as previous Phoenix Wright last cases tend to be. Because I just remember Phoenix Wright 3, or was it Apollo Justice, where the last case was just, like, constant, like, Hey, hey, like, th logic this, logic this, logic this, and I'm just like, I know what the answer is, but you're making me go through, like, a hundred different paths before I reached the answer, and it was so annoying, but this was pretty, like, straightforward, and I really appreciate that. Some people might think it's a little underwhelming, but no, I'm just like, yeah, it is a dramatic, like, last case, but it doesn't have to be crazy because it's the last case. I mean, we still got hit with some, like, truth bombs that still shocked us. Violin was good. Animations were great. I have a lot to work on. Oh yeah, and just like, man, this is just a good game. It was great. There's so many things I want to use for my thumbnail, but they are so spoilery. Oh. Oh. Yeah, did, did, did we ever end up giving the sword, giving Karuma back to Kazuma? Does Edgeworth have Kazuma then? Thanks for streaming it, and honestly, this is why I followed you little games like this. Aw, oh, thank you so much, Smooth, for sticking around. Oh, maybe that, that'll be the thumbnail. Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. 
didn't. Oh, we did it. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, I didn't take a screenshot. I could still record. Ooh. Wait, but then I won't be able to save the picture. Can I? Oh. Wait, um, special contents. Is there a gallery? There is. Gallery. Portraits. Oh. It's just like all the stuff from the... <gasps> Thank you for playing! Oh! Oh! Yeah, <laughs> he's got bats! Oh my gosh! It looks like he's a vampire. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh! Oh, look at look at them! Um, look at them! <laughs> the tree! Oh my gosh! And Baoli is just peeing there. Oh my! <gasps> this is so cute. Oh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Baby Iris. Oh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Fan freaking tastic. Oh. Oh. Look at these. Look at these. Look at these fat boys. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Look at these look at these little little animals. Oh my gosh. Why are they so adorable? Oh. Oh. <gasps> I can take screenshots. I can take Get away from me. Um Wait, no. Hide all this. Hide all this. Uh stupid stupid text. Uh it's for party ways. Oh. I don't want all that text on the bottom. How do I get rid of that? Oh gosh. Oh. But oh. Oh, beautiful boys. Oh. Wow, this is so great. I don't know why I'm looking at these here. I bought the two art books. I was just like, you know what? I really love the art in this game so much. I really am enjoying this game. Let's just buy the art books. Oh, Kazuma. Oh. Oh. Oh, I love you. <sighs> okay. Well. Oh, there's short extra episodes? Okay. Um, I might have to do a special extra stream. Okay, when I do my next art stream to get stuff ready for Nirvana Initiative, I'll play these first. Hopefully these are all really short. And I could just bump them out. <sighs> but yeah, it's been three and a half hours, like I said it would be. So, um, I'm gonna sleep now. I need to shower, actually. It's getting real hot. So, um, yeah. But... We did it. We reached the end of Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. It's been so fun. I'm so glad that they localized this. I love this. It was great. Ah, anyways, that's it for me tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. See you next time. Bye-bye.